What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? What's up? What's up? What's up? Y'all already know what the deal is. Today is Wednesday, Wednesday, hump day, blowing back out day. That's what we call it. I'm just playing. Uh, but hey, welcome, welcome. Y'all already know what the deal is. We're gonna be doing NCLEX questions today. I am your humble host, uh, Kevin. I am a nurse. I go by the boot nurse. Make sure you guys check me out on all those social media platforms. You already know. Your boy be coming with the questions all the time. So you guys already know what the deal is. Smash that like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. Miss Ma'am, I see you. I see you. I, I hope you took a break. I hope you got a little bit of a break today. You know, make sure you get your studying in. You already know we had that conversation. I got you. So, yo, make sure y'all smash that like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. Got these questions off nurseslabs.com. Nurseslabs.com. Free sets of questions. Make sure you guys go over there and check that out. Also, check out thebootnurse.com. Got a freebie over there. You guys can go over there. You guys can check that out as well. Hey, make sure you guys are staying tuned this week. Got some, got some awesome things coming for y'all this week. All right. Some awesome things that y'all been asking for. So make sure you guys follow me and make sure you guys are uh, getting all the free stuff because, you know, that's how I'm able to get in contact with you. So, Aaron, hey, hey, Miss Lady, how are you? And this is water. OK, you already know the deal. We get 100 people up in here. I'm turning this thing around. That way, y'all ain't got to listen to me run my mouth. But I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you are at in your nursing journey. And if you're not a nurse, what you doing here? OK, what you doing here? You know what I'm saying? What's up, Jigglypuff? Probably one of my most favorite Pokemon out there. You know what I'm saying? Put me to sleep. You know what I'm saying? So how y'all doing? How y'all doing? It says Mindy need to do NCLEX. All right, Mindy, do the NCLEX then. Do it. Do it. It says you don't start till 100 people. I don't start until 100 people. Ams. So you know the deal. Get folks over here. Share and stop. Hey, don't be selfish. You know what I'm saying? Get folks over here. Once we get 100 folks. We make it, we, it's on and popping. I feel my NCLEX first attempt. Yesenia, I'm sorry to hear that. So my next question is, what you going to do about it? I'm from Houston. I graduate on Saturday. Emily, yes, ma'am. That's what I'm talking about. Done with school. Okay. Has the live just started? We just started. And you got here on time. I ran for 16 years from West Virginia. Okay. Okay, Miss Girl. Miss Marilyn, how are you? Hey, we're almost there. Do you do LPNs? Yes, I coach LPNs. And these are for LPNs as well. The NGN is easy, you guys. will pass. Hey, we'll see. We'll see how people are. All right, you guys already know the deal. We already got 100 folks up in here, so we're about to turn this thing around. Hey, that is my glorious face right there. Hopefully, you guys can see that. Hey, we're doing NCLEX questions live. I do these Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 5.30. You guys already know what the deal is. Anybody new uh, NCLEX pop-up does work anymore? It might. It all just depends. Hey, remember, that's a glitch in Pearson View system. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, then hey, it doesn't. That's the risk that you take by doing it, okay? So yeah, hey, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 5.30, NCLEX questions. That's what we're doing. We're going to the first one. All right, here we go. Question number one. A 21-year-old male with Hodgkin's lymphoma is a senior at the local university. He is engaged to be married and is to begin a new job upon graduation. Which of the following diagnosis would be a priority for this client? Is it sexual dysfunction related to radiation therapy? Uh, anticipatory grieving related to terminal illness? Tissue integrity related to prolonged bed rest or fatigue related to chemotherapy? What are we thinking? Camille, I didn't know that you weren't here. I didn't know that. I, I, I see that you're here now. I see that you're here now. Hey, by the way, I'm gonna put y'all on a timer because y'all take too long. Yeah, I said it. Hey, if you guys are new here, welcome. We're doing NCLEX questions. We do these every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I got these questions off of nurseslabs.com. You guys are going to ask me the whole live where I got them from, and I'm telling you. Hey, going through going through the online course so far, and it's very thorough. Nick, I appreciate, hey, I appreciate you. Hey, by the way, if anybody that has purchased the seven-day NCLEX course, I just uploaded basic care and comfort and physiological adaptation. Also, I, I uploaded one video called NCLEX Retaker. So if you fail the NCLEX, I have a video up there for you for NCLEX uh, retesters. It's pretty good. It's pretty thorough. If you guys don't know my story, hey, I failed my NCLEX three times, y'all. And guess what? No part of me cares what you think about that. <laughs> there we go. And our answer is A, it is sexual dysfunction related to radiation therapy. Radiation therapy often causes sterility in male clients and would be a primary importance to this client. A psychosocial need of, I'm sorry, the psychosocial needs of the client are important to address in light of the age and life choices. That is part of physiological adaptation, all right? Physiological adaptation, which is what? The third largest section on the NCLEX at 11 to 17%, all right? So make sure, make sure you guys understand that Within the eight sections of the NCLEX, the client needs physiological adaptation is the third largest section. OK, Nick, I didn't see what you said. You're going to have to repeat it. Here we go. Question number two, a client with autoimmune, uh, was it a thrombocytopenic uh, purpura, 
to determine the client's response to treatment, the nurse would monitor what? The platelet count, the white blood cell count, potassium level, or your partial prothrombin time. What are we thinking? Physio ADAPT uh, is the most important. Um, I don't know, that's debatable. There's big three, there's three big sections on the NCLEX. Management of care, pharmacology, physiological adaptation. All three of those sections make up the three make up the big three, make up almost half of the entire exam at 44 to 49%. So I would think a combination of all three of those are the most important. Farm and physio for sure. Farm, physio, management of care. And if you're an LPN, it is definitely coordinated care. All right, I'm gonna give you all 10 seconds. Platelets, okay. Hey, if you guys are new here, welcome. I wanna know who you are, where you're from and where you're at in your nursing journey. Also smash that like button. Hey, we need 10,000 likes. Hey, 10,000 likes or I'm boycotting the rest of this live, I promise you. And if you better ask somebody, cause I will boycott it, I promise you. And you're just gonna have to go for the rest of the week for not having no questions, all right? Make sure it's happening, make sure it's happening. Here we go, here's our answer, y'all. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is, of course, A, it is platelets. Clients with autoimmune thrombocytopenic perperla or ATP have low platelet counts, making answer A the correct answer. The laboratory test will show low platelet counts, usually less than 40,000 for over three months. Uh, blood film shows large platelets and tiny platelet fragments. Bone marrow examination shows an increased number of, was it megacaryocytes? Uh, karyocytes. All right. Physiological adaptation. All right. Third largest section. There's a bunch of these. There's a bunch of physiological adaptation. So that's how to, that tells you how important that section of the client needs are for the NCLEX. Okay. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Question number three. The home health nurse is visiting a client with ATP. The client's platelet count currently is 80. It will be most important to teach the client and family about what? Bleeding precautions, potent, uh, prevention of falls, oxygen therapy or uh, or uh, conservation of energy. What are we thinking? Hey, if you guys are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. Hey, I need hey, I need 10,000 likes, y'all. I need 10,000 likes. Get carpal tunnel for me. Don't come over here, get all this knowledge and be selfish and not give me something back. Don't 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 be that guy or gal, all right? Or whatever you identify as. What are we thinking? It's A. Okay. Oh, Helen. Oh no, wait, that's not Helen Keller. Never mind. All right, cool. Got A. We got A's. Madison, Amari, appreciate the follow. Thank you. All right, y'all, here we go. Here's our answer. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is A, bleeding precautions. Why? Because the platelet counts are so low. The normal platelet counts are 120,000 to 400,000. Now, you'll see some other places where it'll say 150,000 to 450,000. Don't get so hung up on the numbers. Just know that if it is lower than 100,000 a year in like the five digits, that's a problem, right? Or if it's like way above 500,000, that's a problem, okay? Bleeding occurs in clients with low platelets. The priority is to prevent and minimize bleeding. Physiological adaptation, third largest section on the NCLEX, 11 to 17%. Atlanta, uh, I have one more week and this BSN journey is over. <laughs> That's what you think, Mr. Uh, was a ghost. That's what you think. You think that journey is over. It is just beginning, my good sir. It is just beginning. Here we go. Question number four. A client with a pituitary tumor has a transphenoidal uh, uh, hypophysectomy. Which of the following interventions would be appropriate for this client. So this is where physio uh, this is where your pathophysiology comes into play to know what portion of the body is being taken care of and how do we treat it when they come to us and we're taking care of them as the nurses, all right? So do I want to place the client in the T-Berg position for postural drainage? Do I want to encourage coughing and deep breathing every uh, two hours, elevate the head 30 degrees, or do I want to encourage the Valsalva maneuver for bowel movement? What are we thinking? Everybody's screaming C at me. Hey, oh, we got one B over there. Okay. Hey, if you guys are new here, welcome. We're doing NCLEX questions. These are both for RNs and LPNs. Okay. Got them off nurseslabs.com. Nurses, meaning more than one. Labs, meaning more than one.com. Free sets of questions. You guys can go over there and check those out. By the way, if you're still in school, I don't care if you graduate or anything, share it to your cohort. You know what I'm saying? Share it to folks. Even if you don't like them, let them come over here so they can like me. All right. Don't be greedy. You know what I mean? Here we go. Here we go, y'all. 10 seconds. Also, if you're new here, if you're new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from and where you were at in your nursing journey. All right. No, it will increase pressure. OK. Is it Ania? Anina? Anina. Riding around with Anina. I'm all right. I'm, I'm done. No more of that. <laughs> 
Bel Air. Okay, second. All right, here we go, y'all. Here's our answer in three, two. This was in my exit. Hesse, look at that. Look at that. Here we go. And the answer is C, elevate the head of the bed 30 degrees. Elevating the head of the bed 30 degrees avoids pressure on the cella ter tersica and alleviates headaches. A, B, and C are incorrect. In the immediate post-operative period, Patients are monitored in the intensive care unit <clears throat> with monitoring for neurological deterioration, uh, epistaxis, visual dysfunction, diabetes insipidus, and hypotension secondary to acute uh, hypo uh, cortisol cortisolism. There we go. Physiological adaptation, third largest section, 11 to 17%. I, say it right, that, I said my name right. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Anina. Rhyme around with Anina. All right, I'm done. I can't help myself. I'm sorry. Here we go. Question number five. The client with a history of diabetes insipidus is admitted for polyuria, polydipsia, polydipsia, not dipsia, and um, mental confusion. The priority intervention for this client is what? Do I want to measure their urinary output, check vital signs, encourage increased fluid intake, or weigh the patient? I remember that song. Look, I, I bet you do remember that song. That song is wild. I took my NCLEX yesterday and passed. Who said that? Who said that? Is it Tanya or Tan, uh, Tana? Shout out to you. Hey, you already know the deal. Give Miss Tana. Her flowers, tell her congratulations, tell you how you love her. Tell her welcome to the greatest shit show on earth as nursing. Doesn't matter if you're an RN or LPM because you're still a nurse. You know what I'm saying? So, ma'am, congratulations to you. 100% congratulations to you. If you could give somebody one, if you give somebody advice in here, what would, what's the one thing that you would be able to give them advice-wise? Let them know. All right, y'all. I'm trying to monitor the chat, but just so many of y'all. Shout out to all 370-something of y'all in here rocking with me. Here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is check the patient's vital signs. Uh, a large amount of fluid loss can cause fluid and electrolyte imbalances. That should be corrected. The loss of electrolytes can be reflected within the vital signs. Monitor for signs of hypovolemia, uh, hypovolemic shock. Frequent assessment can detect changes early for rapid intervention. Polyuria causes um, decreased circulatory blood volume, physiological adaptation. Practice, 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 and trust your gut. Okay. Hey, I like that. Hey, be hey, better some type of advice than no advice, right? So, hey, you already know the deal. Practice, practice, practice. When she says trust your gut, she essentially means whatever your first answer is, don't change it. Because nine times out of ten, that answer is correct, okay? So, hey, I got a freebie. I got a freebie. Hey, some text, some test taking tips to conquer the NCLEX. You guys go check out that free download. It is at thebootnurse.com slash test. It's a free download. You guys can go over there and pick that up all you want. Also, you guys can check the link in my bio and it is also there for you. Okay. We're on the road to 10,000 likes. So let's get it popping. Here we go. Question number six. A client with hemophilia has a nosebleed. I wonder why. Um, which nursing action is most appropriate to controlling the bleeding? Uh, is it A, place the client in a sitting position with the head hyperextended? B, pack the nares tightly with gauze to, uh, uh, to apply pressure to the source of bleeding? Is it C, pinch the soft lower part of the nose for a minimum of five minutes? Or is it D, apply ice pack to the forehead and back of the neck? What are we thinking? Shout out to everybody in here rocking with me. I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. All right. Got these questions off nurseslabs.com. A little bit about me. I've been a nurse for three and a half years. I've worked in uh, three different ICUs, a burn ICU, a medical ICU, and I floated to neuro. I also have worked in the PACU and I've worked in the, um, in the uh, operating room. So there's a little bit about me. I'll tell you guys a little bit more once we keep going. But I want to know about y'all. Stop being greedy. All right, here we go. Here we go. And the answer is C. Pinch the soft lower part of the nose for a minimum of five minutes. Hmm. Well, let's read it. The client should be positioned upright and leaning forward to prevent aspiration of blood. Usual sites of external bleeding may include the bleeding in the mouth from a cut bite or from cutting of loose uh, or loosing, losing uh, a tooth. Nosebleeds for no obvious reasons, heavy bleeding from minor cuts or bleeding from a cut that resumes after stopping for a short time. Uh, hemophiliacs do not bleed faster or more frequent. Instead, they bleed longer due to a, uh, a deficiency of the clotting factor. Clients are often aware of bleeding before clinical manifestation. Bleeding can be life-threatening to these specific clients. Hey, so when you guys are studying your NCLEX questions, all right, you guys need to be doing content, questions and answers, along with rationales, all three of those. There are no tricks to studying for this exam. So I don't want to hear nobody say, well, somebody told me a trick. Well, they fucking lied to you. All right. It is all about putting in the work. That's what you need to do. All right. Content, 
Q&A rationales, rationales solidify in your head. You know what I'm saying? Can uh, can you help with my personal statement? What you mean? Uh, you don't want me to make your personal statement. It may come out wild. You know what I'm saying? Here we go. Here we go. Question number seven. A client with, uh, oh, I'm sorry. A client has a unilateral uh, adrenalectomy to remove a tumor. To prevent complications, the most important measurement is the immediate post-operative period for the nurse to take is what? Is it blood pressure, temperature, output, or specific gravity? I said, I bet you be, I bet you do great. What, what, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? Oh, okay. Cherry's just talking about somebody else. All right, cool. I got you. I, who was Amber? It was brutal. Amber, what happened? What I miss? I got to go back up. All right, I'm gonna give y'all 10 more seconds. It says I'm a retail pharmacy tech. Please help. Oh, okay. You work at like CVS? <clears throat> All right, y'all. Blood pressure. Okay, we got A's. We got C's. Hey, hey, we're on the road to 10,000 likes. Hey, get carpal tunnel for me right now. Oh, you took your NCLEX today. Girl, you good? You Gucci out here. Walgreens. Hey, that's right down the street. All right, here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is A. It is blood pressure. It is. Blood pressure is the best indicator for cardiovascular collapse in the client who has had an adrenal gland removed. The remaining gland might have uh, been suppressed due to the tumor activity. Primary adrenal insufficiency occurs after bilateral adrenalectomy. Signs and symptoms are volume depletion, hypotension, hyponatremia, hyperkalemia, fever, and abdominal pain. Patients are managed by replacement therapy based on glucocorticoids, mineral corticoids, uh, and cases of confirmed corticoids or adrenal, or I'm sorry, uh, aldosterone deficiency, respectively. That is re uh, that is a physiological adaptation, third largest section on the exam, 11 to 17 percent. Shout out to all the follows and shout out to all y'all for rocking with me and listening to me run my mouth. Uh, any tips for ATI comp? Uh, is that like your exit exam? The biggest thing is that you need to know for those is uh it's management like it's the big ones like management of care pharmacology funds like you got to have a little bit of everything all right do you go over ngn morgan so with ngn about 30 to 40 percent of your ngn all it is is really just case studies do i i go over these free questions that are over here on um that are on nurseslabs.com so it says how long is this live thank you for doing this uh it'll be the live goes on until i until i finish so I don't know how long that's going to be. Here we go. Question number eight. A client with Addison's disease has been admitted with a history of nausea and vomiting for the past three days. The client is receiving IV glucocorticoids, uh, solumedrol. Which of the following interventions would the nurse uh, implement? Is it uh, weight or I'm sorry, daily weights, uh, intake output measurements, sodium and potassium levels monitored or glu uh, glucometer readings are ordered? What are we thinking? Has low sodium. Okay. If I have a low sodium, what else is going to be? What else is going to look funky? All right. Everybody's screaming C. Shout out to all 600 plus y'all. Hey, 10,000 likes. Who said, how are you? Boss chick, Miss Ma'am, how are you? Hey, you say, hey, see, this is how we do. This is how we do our lives every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Everybody be rock in here rocking with me. Hey, but if you guys are new, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. We're doing NCLEX questions. Got them off nurseslabs.com. Make sure you guys go over there and check that out. All right. Here is our answer. Hold on. Somebody said something about a master's degree. Uh, does getting a master's degree different from BSN in any way? Really? Yes, it does, because it depends. I love this. Thank you, Sonny. You're welcome. Here we go. I'm an MP, but love review. That's what I'm talking about, Whitney. And the answer is D. It's a glucometer readings are ordered. All right. Hey, hear me out. Y'all, some of y'all going to be like, what? But listen, listen. All right. This is why it's important that you read your freaking uh, what are these? You read your rationales. Somebody said, I just graduated. I'm studying for my NCLEX now. Shout out to you. All right, so here we go. An IV glucocorticoid raises the glucose levels and require frequent coverage with insulin. Uh, cortisone and uh, prednisone replace cortisol deficits, which will promote sodium reabsorption. All right. Hey, physiological adaptation. Physiological adaptation, which is the third largest section on the NCLEX at 11 to 17 percent. Y'all stop playing with me. I'm not. Hey, listen, studying. You need content, questions and answers and a rationale. The rationale allows for it to retain into that small brain that I have and big brains that y'all have. You know what I'm saying? Because nothing but love because I talk about y'all in, in, in really, really good ways. It says top three. We're expected. We're in mid D is an optional. Hmm. Hey, remember, we're doing real. We're doing we're doing perfect world, not real world. All right. So don't get it confused when you guys are studying. You got to do it's perfect world, NCLEX world. OK, so here we go. Question number nine, a client with a total uh, thyroidectomy. I'm sorry. A client had a total thyroidectomy yesterday. The client is complaining of tingling around the mouth and in the fingers and toes. 
what would the nurse's next action be? Is it obtain a crash card, check the calcium level, assess for drain, uh, dressing for drainage, or assess the blood pressure for hypertension? What are we thinking? I'm in pre-nursing. Shout out to you, Janelle. Everybody's screaming B. B all day. Okay. B, all right. G Foster yelling at me. Okay. Aurora and your mom uh, or your mom. Uh, appreciate the follow. Appreciate the follow. B, y'all. All right, Trent. Hey, say, hey, hey, another thing I want everybody to realize is that Everybody is in different stages in their nursing journey. So just be aware of that. Don't be rude in the chat because I will ban that ass. All right, here we go, y'all. Here we go. Here is our answer. Here is our answer in three, two. And the answer is B. All right, check the calcium level. The parathyroid glands are responsible for calcium production and can be damaged during a thyroidectomy. The tingling is due to low calcium levels. Uh, evaluate reflexes periodically observe for uh, neuromuscular irritability twitching numbing paresthesia positive shavastex and chuso signs and seizure activity that's physiological adaptation which is the third largest section on the NCLEX exam hey one of the hey what is it shavastex and chuso's they have twitching on the side of the cheek or if they if you squeeze or put a blood pressure cuff on their arm their their arm will start twitching right so those are signs when you have somebody who has a thyroid uh, thyroidectomy the website is nurseslabs.com all right you're welcome, Julie. You're welcome. I don't know if that was to me, but you're welcome. Uh, here we go. Question number 10. A 32-year-old mother of three is brought to the clinic. Her pulse is 52. There is a weight gain of 30 pounds in four months, and the client is wearing two sweaters. The client is diagnosed with hypo, hypothyroidism, which of the following nursing diagnosis is the highest priority. Is it impaired physical mobility related to decreased endurance? Is it hypothermia related to decreased metabolic rate, disturbance, disturbed thought process related to intestinal edema or decreased cardiac output related to bradycardia what are we thinking shout out to all 640 of y'all in here rocking with me hey we're on the road to 20,000 likes y'all thought we were just gonna get to 10,000 likes and that was it come on hey la, 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 la. you already know the deal get carpal tunnel for me you already moosney i know you out there hey you already know what you need to do make it happen make it happen hey hold on hold on y'all hey by the way if you guys start seeing those those bots that pop in here where it says see my private video um, y'all let me know because I block those a lot and, um, well, I don't buy people's nudes when you can get them for free. Anyways, here is our answer. All right. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is D cardiac output related to bradycardio, cardio, cardio. All right. The decrease in pulse can affect the cardiac output and lead to shock which would take precedence over the other choices. Protect against coldness, provide extra layers of clothing or extra blankets, discourage and avoid the use of external heating sources, monitor patient's body temperature, that is physiological adaptation, which is the third largest section on the NCLEX exam, all right? So hypothyroidism, hey, pay attention to those, all right? Pay attention to those isms, all right? Here we go, hey, real quick break, hey, real quick, hey, I have an ebook, y'all. I have an ebook. It's over there at thebootners.com slash victory. Also, that link is also in my bio, right? Hey, I, there's something I want y'all to realize that the path to NCLEX to conquering it begins with you. All right. There's no games. There's I'm trying to tell y'all right now. There are no tricks to taking this damn exam. It's called putting in the work. All right. I got over 780 pages worth of stuff in here for y'all. Everything from pharmacology to EKGs to uh, uh, freaking management and delegation for both RNs and LPNs. You guys can go over there and check that out. That link is also in my bio. All right, the bootnurse.com slash victory because that's what we do around here. That's what we do. On the road to victory, question number 11. The client is having an arteriogram, right? During the procedure, the client tells the nurse, I'm feeling really hot. Which response would be best? Keyword is best, okay? You are having an allergic reaction. I will get an order for Benadryl. Or is it B, that feeling of warmth is normal when the dye is injected? C, the feeling of warmth indicates that the clot in the coronary vessels are dissolving? Or is it D, I will tell your doctor and let him know or let him explain to you the reason for uh, the hot feeling that you are experiencing? What are we thinking? Shout out to all 572 of y'all in here rocking with me. We are doing NCLEX questions for both RNs and LPNs. Got these off of nurseslabs.com, nurseslabs.com. Free sets of questions. You guys can go over there and check those out. Also, if you're a new nurse and you start, if you started this semester or even if you start here in the next semester, they have care plans over there. 
They have care plans over there. Trust and believe me. I used them five years ago when I graduated school. So trust and believe me, you are no different if you go over there and use nurseslabs.com to get your learn on. All right. Hey, don't be scared and don't be over there saying like, oh, my God, this is cheating. Yo, whoever tells you they're cheating, they're dumb. And you should probably not be around them. Um, Here we go. <laughs> here we go, y'all. Here's our answer. Here is our answer in three, two. And the answer is B. The f That feeling of warmth is normal when the dye is injected. I'm sorry, y'all, that if this is so small, but hey, we're working. This is how we do. It is normal for the client to have a warm sensation when the dye is injected. The client may have some discomfort from a needle stick. He or she may feel symptoms such as flushing in the face or parts of the body when the dye is injected. The exact symptoms will depend on the part of the body being examined. Physiological, adaptation, you know what I'm saying? Let's go. Stop playing games. Smash that like button and start sharing. You know what I'm saying? Get it out to people. Physiological adaptation, third largest section on the NCLEX, 11 to 17%. Let's go. Here we go. Question number 12. The nurse is observing several healthcare workers providing care. Which action by the healthcare worker indicates a need for further teaching? So what is nurse private freaking whoever? What are they doing that is incorrect that requires us as the nurse to fix them? Um, is it the nursing assistant wears gloves while giving the client a bed bath? Uh, the nurse wears goggles while drawing blood from the client, the doctor washes his hands before examining the client, or is it D, the nurse wears gloves to take the client's vital signs? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Hey, if you guys are new here, welcome, welcome. Hey, I want to know who you are, where you're from, and where you are at on your nurse or in your nursing journey. Do you need to do uh, two years of school or four years if you want to be a practical? Um, it all just depends on the program. Most practical programs are like around a year. I've seen I've heard that they've been, you know, anywhere as early as 10 months as a licensed practical nurse. But uh, usually for L, uh, for RNs, uh, a minimum of two years if you find a two year program. You're from Raleigh level two. OK, like Raleigh, North Carolina. I got some folks over there. Dylan from Ohio. OK, shout out to y'all. Here we go, y'all. Here's our answer. Here is our answer in three, two. And the answer is D. The nurse wears gloves to take the client's vital signs. It is not necessary to wear gloves to take the vital signs of the client. If the client has an active infection, such as like MRSA, gloves should be worn, right? Uh, uh, wash hands or perform hand hygiene before having contact with the patient. Also, impart these duties to the patient and their significant others. So if you have uh, family members coming in and out, make sure that they wash their hands every single time, right? Know the, uh, know the instances when to perform hand hygiene or five moments or five moments for hand hygiene, physiological integrity, adaptation, third largest section on the NCLEX exam. You know what I'm saying? Hey, y'all are in finals week this week. All right. This is how you put in the work. This is how you do something extra. This is how you do something extra, right? Not what they provide you at school, but this is how you do something extra. Come on over here, rocking with me. So I appreciate y'all. Question 13. The client is having electroconvulsive therapy for the treatment of severe depression. Which of the following indicates that the client's ECT has been effective? The client loses consciousness, client vomits, the ECG indicates tachycardia, or the client has a grand mal seizure. What are we thinking? Shout out to all 700 of y'all in here rocking with me. Excuse me while I sip on this water. Ah, wow, that was ignorant. I am so sorry. But I appreciate y'all being here. Listen to me act a fool. If you guys are finding value, make sure you guys keep smashing that like button. Michigan and fundamental. Shout out to you, Miss Ma'am. All right. You don't know. Hey, I, even if you don't know, I would rather you guess. You have a 25 percent chance of getting the answer right rather than you not answering at all and then getting it, not getting the not getting anything. All right. So just make sure make sure you answer something, because this is why it's important that you read your rationales. Right. This is why it's important that you read your rationales. All right. Um, so here we go. And the answer is D. The answer is D. Now, hold up. Now, I know some of y'all are about to be like, Kevin, what in the actual hell? Hey, this is why it's important that we read our rationales, ladies and gentlemen. All right, here we go. During the ECT, the client will have a grand mal seizure. This indicates completion of the electroconvulsive therapy. Seizure threshold is established via trial and error via, uh, uh, was it incrementally higher doses of current during the primary treatment session. Following the, following the initial dose 
calculation, the dose is subsequent ECT sessions for bilateral ECT is 1.5 to two times seizure threshold. And for unilateral is six times the seizure, the seizure threshold. During the course of ECT treatment, the seizure threshold commonly increases as the patient develops tolerance. That is physiological adaptation. Didn't know that. Now, Josephine, Miss Ma'am, now you know. All right. That's why it's important. This is why it's important, right? This, I, I, you know, yeah, no, nah, I got epilepsy. Well, we don't want you to have that then. All right. Yeah. Memory loss is definitely one of them as well. It's, it's a common one. Right. But a lot of people are just like, well, we don't want them to have a seizure. Mm-hmm. Well, we got to figure out a threshold. They're going to get electricity pumped in that body. You know what I'm saying? Here we go. Question number 14. Uh, the five year old is being treated for pinworms. Right. To collect a specimen for assessment of pinworms, the nurse should treat the mother to or yeah, to teach the mother to what? Examine the uh, uh, perianal area with a flashlight two or three hours after the child is asleep. Uh, scrape the skin with a piece of cardboard and bring it to the clinic. Obtain a stool sample in the afternoon or bring a hair sample to the clinic for evaluation. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Shout out to all 600 plus of y'all. Hey, at one point, we just had a thousand people up in here. So y'all keep sharing. Hey, keep smashing that like button. We're almost to 20,000 likes. We're almost there. We're almost there. Hey, I want to know who you are, where you're from, and where you are at in your nursing journey. All right. Hey, another thing about me, I've been in the Navy, the United States Navy, for 16 years. 16 years. I uh, also have two deployments. I, I'm a master instructor in the Navy as well. So I've been teaching for the last eight years. I was a, an instructor slash coordinator for a surgical technology program uh, for about three and a half years. Now I'm a trauma nurse instructor and I teach other courses as well. So, hey, I'm happy to have all y'all here. I love doing this. This is this is my thing. Scotch tape test. There you go. Here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is a examine the peri the perianal area with a flashlight two or three hours after the child is asleep. Infection with pinworms begins with the eggs or when the eggs are ingested or inhaled. The eggs hatch in the upper intestine and mature in two to eight weeks. The females then mate and migrate out the anus where they uh, lay out their 17,000 eggs. It's actually pretty gross. Uh, This causes intense itching. The mother uh, should be told to use a flashlight to examine the rectal area about two to three hours after the child is asleep. Placing clear tape um, on a tongue blade uh, will allow the eggs to adhere to the tape. Somebody said something about that. And the specimen uh, should be brought in for evaluation. That is physiological adaptation. Third largest section on the NCLEX exam. It says, yeah, I learned this from my sister when she, oh, uh-huh, look at that. that. Hey, sometimes you can put in personal experience in there. Personal experience. All right. Why tell the mom and not the dad? Because the mom was the only one that was in there. That was in the question. I ain't see nothing about dad. Don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. All right. Hi, I'm in Florida. And I'm sorry for the tea. Shout out to you, Miss Marie. Yes to breed. Uh, okay, here we go. Question 15. The nurse is teaching the mother regarding treatment for pinworms, right? We were just talking about that. Which instruction should be given regarding the medication? Treatment is not recommended for children less than 10 years of age. The entire family should be treated. Medication therapy will continue for one year. IV antibiotic therapy will be ordered. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Nisha says it's B. Monica, no, Monica says it's B. I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. Shout out to job rule. Uh, (laughs) I'm gonna give you all 15 seconds. Denzel says D. Okay. Okay. What else we got? Jen says D. Candace says B. Okay. I see Ashlyn D with the question mark. Ashlyn, you gotta you gotta give me something solid. You gotta give me something solid. I don't want no question marks now. In love says uh, B. Okay. KG. Hey, those are my initials. Shout out to you. Uh all right, y'all. Here we go. Here we go. You good, Ashlyn. You good. You good. Sometimes I sometimes I peep the chat and I'm just like, okay, GG, you got to guess. Give me something. All right, here we go. Well, you can't give me nothing now because now the answer is already there. But <laughs> here we go. And the answer is B. The entire family should be treated, right? Pinworms is treated with, uh, what is it, Vermox uh, or uh, Antiminiths, right? Hey, by the way, pharmacology, when it comes to pronunciation, uh, I'm just letting you know that uh, sometimes you don't say these all day and uh, you'll mess them up and that's okay. The entire family should be treated to ensure that no eggs remain because a single treatment is usually sufficient. There is usually good compliance. The family should be tested again in two weeks to ensure that no eggs remain. Pinworms can cause recurrent reinfection. So treating the entire household, whether symptomatic or not, is recommended to prevent a reoccurrence. Physiological integrity. Physiological integrity, 11 to 17%. All right. 
Remember, it makes up the, it's the third largest section on the NCLEX exam. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we, hey, whoa, quick commercial break. Shout out to all 700 of y'all. Hey, I have an NCLEX course, y'all. I have an NCLEX course. I have 60 videos that are in there right now. I have a new generation NCLEX review. It's both for RNs and LPNs. You guys can check that out. It is at thebootnurse.com slash special. And also, if you go up to the link in my bio, you will see where it says seven day NCLEX course. By the way, the seven days is just me saying that, hey, I don't like going to all those reviews that they have that are over a three day period. So I spread it out. Who the hell wants to go over a weekend and cram all this information when we can do it over the span of a week? Also, it's on demand. So you can do it however you want. You want to do it an hour one day, you, you know, do it. Give me at least an hour to three hours a day and it's on demand. You see what I'm saying? So go over there and check that out. Seven day NCLEX course. All right. Bootnurse.com slash special. All right, here we go. So, uh, question number 16. The registered nurse is making assignments for the day. Which client should be assigned to the pregnant nurse? All right. I almost read that wrong. The client receiving uh, was a linear accelerator radiation therapy for lung cancer. The client with radium implant for cervical cancer. The client who has just been um, what administered soluble uh, uh, brachytherapy for thyroid cancer, or is it the client who returned from placement of iridium seeds for prostate cancer? What are we thinking? If you guys hear my son back there crying, it's just he crying. I don't know. He sound like he. Hold on. Yep. There's a the delay. <laughs> there it is. So definitely a okay. I'm gonna give y'all 15 seconds. Hey, but shout out to all y'all that are in here. Hey, we're on the road to 30,000 likes, baby. Hey, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. If you are new here, we're doing NCLEX questions, both for RNs and LPNs. All right. I got them off nurseslabs.com, nurseslabs.com, free sets of questions. Make sure you guys go over there and check those out. All right. And here's our answer in three, two, Logan, thank you for the follow. And the answer is A, the client receiving linear accelerator radiation therapy for lung cancer. The pregnant client should not be assigned to any client with radioactivity present. The client receiving linear accelerator uh, therapy travels to the radium department for therapy. The radiation stays in the department, so the client is not uh, radioactive. This client, uh, These clients are radioactive in very small doses, especially upon returning from the procedure. For approximately 72 hours, the clients should uh, dispose of urine and feces in specific containers and use plastic spoons and forks. That is part of safety and effective care environment, which essentially is management of care, delegation, assignment, right? Legal and ethics, right? All kinds of things fall under safety and effective care environment, okay? I'm from Texas. I graduate with my BSN tomorrow. Shout out to you, Becca. Shout out to you. Hey I, hey, I live in Texas, too. Hey, I live in San Antonio. You know what I'm saying? Big little city. I love it out here. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I say I want to know who y'all are, where y'all where y'all from, where you're at in your nursing journey. Also, if you are not a nurse in here rocking, you know what I'm saying? What you do? What's your, what, what do you do? What do you do with your life? Just listening, working on my MSN education. Hey, that's what I'm going. Shout out to you, Miss Jessica. That's exactly what I'm going to school for, uh, getting mine uh, in nurse education, right? I love teaching out here. It's fun for me, all right? Question 17, the nurse is planning room assignments for the day. Which client should be assigned to a private room if only one is available? Is it a client with Cushing's disease, diabetes? Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, acron, acron, oh, my God. Is it acro acromegaly or myxedema? Lord have mercy. Jenna has been an RN for eight years, currently doing hospice. Okay, shout out to you, Miss Jenna. Same nursing education in my passion in oncology. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. I just started my LPN program. I'm going to bridge to RN. Okay, I am a nursing professor. Who said that? Who said I'm a nursing professor? Uh, Doc, Miss Sh Miss Shirley. Miss Shirley in the building, y'all. Miss Shirley. Shout out to you, Miss Shirley. Hey, we need more educators out there, y'all. We need more. We, and here, let me rephrase that. We need more good educators out there. All right. We need more good educators. Doc Shirley. Oh, excuse me, Dr. Shirley. Miss Dr. Shirley. Shout out to you, Miss Ma'am. Here we go. It says graduated in 2020, have failed the NCLEX a few times. Uh, taken again next month. Shout out to you, Ebony. Shout out to you. Here we go. Here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is. A, it, the client with Cushing's disease. The client with Cushing's disease has an adrenal cortical hypersecretion. This increase in the level of cortisone causes the client to be immunosuppressed. High cortisol levels also cause immune uh, disruption. This hormone leads to a decrease in lymphocytes levels 
and increases the neutrophils. It causes a uh, detachment of what is it? Marginating. Oh, my God. Marginating pool of of neutrophils in the bloodstream and increases the circulate the circulating neutrophil levels. Although there is no increased production of the neutrophils, once again, safety and effective care environment. Right, one of the it's the largest section where it has management of care, delegation, assignment, so on and so forth. Okay, so just letting y'all know. Make sure when you guys are studying, you guys have content, your questions and answers. Also, you need to be reading your rationales. Okay, here we go. Question number 18. The nurse caring for a client in the neonatal intensive care unit administers adult strength digitalis to a three pound infant. Lord of mercy. Um, as a result of her actions, the baby suffers permanent heart and brain damage. The nurse can be charged with what? Is it neglect? Tort, assault, or malpractice. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Shout out to all 600 of y'all in here rocking with me. If you guys are new here, welcome. We're on the road to 30,000 likes. Smash that like button. Get Carpal Tunnel for me. Make it happen. Also, I want to know who you are, where you're from, and where you are at in your nursing journey. Hey, does anybody remember a story of a, of a, of a specific nurse who gave the wrong medication to a patient and that patient passed away? Anybody know what her name is? Canada first. Okay. Thank you, Miss Z's and Amberlyn for the follow. Sean, appreciate the share. Keegan, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. Yeah, at Vanderbilt, I think. Yep. It's Van at Vandy, right? Redonda Vaught. Yeah, not a nurse, but D. Okay. There you go. Redonda, right? There you go. Hey, I just want to let y'all know. She was on a podcast recently. If you guys haven't seen that, I gotta find out what the podcast is. But she was on a podcast. Um, and listening to that podcast is like it, it's 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 sad because you could tell that she genuinely made a mistake, but that mistake cost somebody, um, you know, their life cost her her license and now all the litigation and stuff that she has to go through. So this is why it's important for all those people that are out there that you need to pay attention about what you're doing and the medication that you're giving, because even that one mistake can cost somebody's life. And then that, that, your, your world will be upside down. So make sure you guys pay attention to that. OK, but the answer is D for malpractice. The nurse could be charged with malpractice, which is failing to perform or performing an act that causes harm to the client, giving the infant an overdose falls in that category. In the United States, a patient may allege medical malpractice against a clinician, which is typically denied, uh, I'm sorry, defined by the failure to provide the degree of care another clinician in the same position that the same uh, credentials would be performed that re, I'm sorry, that result in the injury of the patient. Sorry, that is a mouthful, but this is where legal, legal and ethics actually fall under safe and effective care environment. Kevin, I take my NCLEX in a week, pray for me. Why? What I got to pray for you? You good? You good? You got it. You got it out here. You, hey, if you putting in that work, I ain't got to pray because I already believe. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that's what I'm saying. Hey, if you guys feel it, smash that like button. You know what I'm saying? Make it happen. Why do nurses learn this? Why do nurses learn this? Oh, all right. Here we go. Question 19. Which assignment should not be performed by the licensed practical nurse? Is it inserting a Foley catheter, discontinuing an NG tube, obtaining a, a sputum specimen or starting a blood transfusion? Who just gave me a oh, is that a leopard claw? A shout out to you. Shout out to you. Thank you, Dr. Shirley. I appreciate you. Too easy. Stacy. Hey, maybe it's too easy for you. You know what the deal is. It says D because of blood. OK, we got D. We got A. D for the from the LPN. OK. All right. Shout out to y'all. Appreciate everybody rocking with me. Hey, we ate hey, hey, 30,000 likes. Get there. Get there. Make it happen. Uh, Can't start infusion. OK, I'm gonna give you all five seconds and four, three. I take my test tomorrow, too. OK, you good. One. And the answer is D, starting a blood transfusion. The licensed practical nurse should not be assigned to begin a blood transfusion. An LPN works under the supervision of doctors and RNs performing duties such as taking vital signs, collecting samples, administering medications, ensuring patient comfort, and reporting the status of their patients to the nurse. Hey, that is delegation. That is assignment. Right. So I have to know what the LP, the LPN needs to know what they can and cannot do, what they can and cannot accept me as the RN. I need to know what patient I can give them. And if that patient becomes unstable, they now become my patient is the LPN in, uh, uh, equivalent to the RPN. Uh, you must be in Canada. So, yes. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Shout out to everybody. that got that question. Right. Question number 20. All right. The client returns 
to the unit from surgery with a blood pressure of 90 over 50, a pulse of 132, and respiratory rate of 30. Which action by the nurse should receive priority? So what is the, what am I going to do, right? Do I want to uh, continue to monitor the, the vital signs? Contact the physician, ask the client how he feels, or ask the LPN to continue the post-op care. What? Hey, shout out to all 700 plus of y'all in here rocking with me. We are doing NCLEX questions. Got them off nurseslabs.com. They're both for RNs and LPNs. You guys can go over there and check them out for yourself. They're free sets of questions, y'all. Free. You know what I'm saying? Free. F-R-E-E. -E, you know, so make sure you guys go over there and check those out. Hey, we're on the road to 30,000 likes. All right. Why do you call them clients? Who I don't know. They're client, patient, they're interchangeable. It doesn't matter that it, honestly, it doesn't it really doesn't matter if you call them client or patient because it doesn't take away from you answering the question. All right. Never mind. B is your name spaghetti. Is your name Sp spaghetti? -re oh, my God. I'm just going to call you spaghetti. Here we go. Here's our answer. Y'all. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is B. We want to contact the physician. The vital signs are abnormal and should be reported immediately. The early detection of changes in vital signs typically correlate with fast detection of changes in the cardiopulmonary status of the patient as well as up uh, was a gradation of levels of service if needed. Patient safety is a fundamental concern in any healthcare organization and early detection of any clinical deterioration is a paramount importance where the patient is in the emergency department or in the hospital floor. That is physiological adaptation. Third largest section on the NCLEX at 11 to 17 percent. 11 to 17%, third largest section on the NCLEX. First largest section, management of care. Second is pharmacology, all right? Make sure y'all know it. Make sure y'all study it. Yo, I get asked this question all the time. Kevin, do you do personal private tutoring one-on-one? -on -one? Yes, I do. I got asked that question all the time, and I was just like, yo, I got you, fine. I'll figure something out. So now I figured it out. So I do private tutoring. If you guys want to talk to me, if it's about pre-nursing, if you're in nursing school, especially for exit ATIs, exit HESIs, all that good, and especially for NCLEX, you guys can check me out. That link is also in my bio, but it's thebootnurse.com slash call. You guys can holler at me, and we can make some stuff work. And trust me, the same exact way that I'm here on this live is the same exact way that I am on a call. All right. So uh, let's see. Here we go. Question number one or 21. I'm talking one, but 21. Do your thing, 21. Which nurse should be assigned <laughs> to care for the postpartum client with preeclampsia, the RN with two weeks of experience in postpartum, three years of experience in labor and delivery, 10 years of experience in surgery, or one year of experience in the neonatal intensive care unit? What are we thinking? Y'all can put that boot nurse in there. Y'all can put that boot baby nurse in there. Y'all can do that. Please don't do that. Please, please, please don't do that. <laughs> hey, so once again, you can already tell what type of question this is, right? You can already tell, like we're doing, we're doing delegation assignment, right? So I can already tell you, you should already be able to tell me where, what type of question this is and what category it falls under in regards to the client needs for the NCLEX. All right. You guys should be already be able to tell me that. All right, I'm gonna give y'all 10 seconds. User 57. Girl, I see you over there. I see you. Uh, is this an actual question that they'd ask? I mean, they would ask you, they would ask you a question like this, but it wouldn't, it, the answer choices would be, be would be a bit different. And the, the answer choices could be more uh more extended or it could be less. It all just depends. All right, here we go, y'all. Here's our answer in three, two, and the answer is B, uh, the RN with three years of experience in the labor and delivery. The nurse with three years of experience in labor and delivery knows the, uh, the most about possible complications involving preeclampsia. Registered nurses need to know their rights and responsibilities when considering a patient assignment. The nurse-patient assignment process is also often a mutual process in which the charge nurse must sort through multiple decision criteria in a limited amount of time. Once again, safety and effective care Env uh, environment management of care falls under that, which is the largest section on the exam, right? Because we're trying to figure out who we are going to assign to who patient to nurse. All right. This is why it is important that you guys study these questions. It doesn't matter how easy you feel that they are. Repetition, repetition, repetition is the key. All right, here we go. Question number 21. Which information should be reported to the State Board of Nursing? Right. The facility fails to provide literature in both Spanish and English. The NARC count has been incorrect on the unit for the past three days. The client fails to receive an itemized account of his bill and services received during his hospital stay. Or the nursing assistant assigned to the client with hepatitis fails to feed the client and give the bath. All right. So what are we thinking? 
What are we thinking? Already, we already know what type of question that this is, right? Already, like we're talking, we're talking about we're going to report it to the Board of Nursing. We already know what type of question that this is. Sarah says B with a question mark. Okay, Sarah. Sarah, you got A. If you don't know, you can guess. I, you have a 25% chance of getting it right, right? But also when you start, when you guys are looking at questions, apply what you know versus trying to apply what you don't know. That's how you, that's how you go through your process of elimination, right? And then understand the topic of the question. Like what, what are they really asking? You can reword it to where it makes more sense, but don't reword it so much to the point where you'll get the answer wrong or where you'll get the question wrong. Okay, here we go. Here's our answer, y'all. Here is our answer in three, two. And the answer is B. The NARC count has been incorrect on the unit for the past three days. General advice from the Department of Health is that stocks of controlled drugs should be kept to a minimum required to meet the clinical needs of patients. They should be stored securely in a locked cabinet and safe to prevent unauthorized access with the keys held in a safe place. That is part of legal and ethics, right? Also, safety and effective care. This is why anybody that works on a floor where, and you run out of medications, pharmacy always has to come and you know, replenish it because you can't just have a, a, a smorgasbord. <laughs> is that a word? Yeah, it is a word. But you just can't have just an abundance of all these narcotic drugs in there. And so, hey, if it, if the count is incorrect, somebody reporting it to somebody and best believe they're going to find it. They're going to find it and they're going to find you. So don't you think that you're going to get away with it. All right. Question number 23. The nurse is suspected of charting medication administration that he did not give. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. After talking to the nurse, the charge nurse should what? Call the board of nursing, file a formal reprimand, terminate the nurse, or charge the nurse with tort. What are we thinking? I pass my NCLEX. Shout out to Special K. Special K. Hey, I already know the deal. Give Special K her love right now. Tell her that you love her. Tell her that she's great. Tell her welcome to the greatest shit show on earth known as nursing, right? And Special K, if you could give somebody one piece of advice about studying for the NCLEX and going to take it, what would it be? What would it be? All right, I'm going to give y'all 15 seconds. It says tort is for the law. So excited. I bet you are. I bet you are. Hey, hard work pays off, y'all. That's what it's all about. Hard work pays off, okay? Congratulations. That's what's up. Y'all, hey, give that love out there. You know what I'm saying? This one is hard. Hey, it could be hard. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. You already know. Somebody trying to sell me nudies. The, hey, just know. Just know, y'all. No one, you don't ever have to buy nudies, okay? You just, you, you, you can acquire them for free. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here's our answer, y'all. And three, two, and the answer is B. File a formal reprimand, all right? Let's see. Let us see, all right? The next action after discussing the problem with the nurse is to document the incident by filing a formal reprimand. As a rule of thumb, nurses should avoid making assumptions when they notice gaps or missing information in a patient's treatment documentation. Healthcare professionals have uh, ex exceedingly have exceedingly demanding schedules, but it always it's always better to take the time and double check the details than to make assumptions and be wrong. Hey, that is legal. That is a legal thing that falls under safe and effective care environment. All right, so. I'm telling you, I have seen it on multiple occasions where some people, they had like, you know, drugs in their pocket and they, they totally forgot to happen because like a code happened or they forgot to give it and they get home and they're like, oh my God. And then they do the check and they're just like, it's in my pocket. My bad. I'm bringing it back. I've seen it happen, you know, because nurses make mistakes because there's a lot that's going on, especially if you had, you know, some, some shit shows of nights. You know what I mean? It's better to know and study because Google will not be there during exactly like who like <laughs> you think you're going to be able to search Google uh, is this triage? No, this is a compilation. All right, here we go, y'all. Question number 24. The home health nurse is planning for the day's visit. Which client should she see first? All right, y'all should already know where this falls under. All right, is it a 78-year-old with a gastrectomy three weeks ago and has a peg tube? A five-month-old discharge a week ago with pneumonia who is being treated with amoxicillin? Uh, liquid suppression, a 50 year old with MRSA being treated with vancomycin via a PICC line, or a 30 year old with exacerbation of multiple sclerosis being treated with cortisone via a central, uh, a central placed venous catheter. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Hey, shout out to all 800 and what? Hey, almost 900 y'all in here rocking with me. You know what I'm saying? We're doing NCLEX questions, got them off nurseslabs.com. Uh, free sets of questions. You guys go over there and check those out for yourself. Hey, we're on the road to 40,000 likes. I need everybody in here, all thousand of y'all now to give get carpal tunnel for me. 
I'm just going to put that on a shirt. That way people will know they're like, yeah, I got carpal tunnel for him while I studied. Uh, but also I want to know who you are, where you're from and where you are at in your nursing journey. Haley says B. All right, Hales, I see you out there. Miss Laura says D. OK, I see you. I see you. I'm not even a nurse, but it's interesting. OK, Ashley, I'm glad you're here. I'm a medical assistant trying to get into nursing school. Hey, you better put it. Got to put in that work. You know what I'm saying? Hey, remember all those things that are put into place. And to get into nursing school, they're they're put there to keep people out. Harlem, uh, they're put there to keep people out. All right. So you got to put in the work if you want to try to be part of, you know, part of the nursing clan, so to speak. Right. But the answer, ladies and gentlemen, is D, the 30 year old with an exacerbation of multiple sclerosis being treated with cortisone via a centrally placed venous catheter. The client is highest risk for complication. I'm sorry, the client at highest risk for complication is the client with multiple sclerosis being treated with the central line, uh, with the cortisone for the central line. Multiple sclerosis is a complex disease process. In in addition to sensory and visual changes, weakness, coordination problems, and spasticity can present other uh, complaints relating to overall health include uh, bladder and bowel dysfunction, depression, cognitive impairment, fatigue, sexual dysfunction, sleep disturbance, and vertigo. The others are more stable. That is part of safe and effective care environment, management of care. Who are you going to see first? Who's going to die if you don't see them first? Think of it like that. All right, here we go. That makes no sense. It doesn't matter if it makes sense. You got to understand it. Here we go. Question number 25. Question number 25. And yes, central lines have do have a high risk of infection as well. And you got to think with multiple sclerosis, they already have a whole bunch of other stuff that's going on. Right. So question number 25. The emergency room is floated. Oh, I'm sorry. Floated. The emergency room is flooded with clients injured in a tornado. OK, so this tells me we're doing we're dealing with a mass casualty type of issue. Right. Which client or which clients can be assigned to share a room in the emergency department during the disaster? Is it a schizophrenic client having visual and auditory uh, hallucinations and a client with ulcerative colitis? Is it a client six months pregnant with abdominal pain and a client with facial lacerations and a broken arm? Is it a child with pupils that are fixed and dilated and his parents uh, and a client with a frontal head injury, or is it a client who arrives with a large puncture wound to the abdomen and the client with chest pain? What are we thinking? I'll give you all 30 seconds for this one because this one's a little bit longer. So what are we thinking? Shout out to all y'all. Hey, we're on the road to 40,000 likes. Smash that like button, y'all. Make it happen. Smash the like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. That is the trifecta that TikTok needs. And and, and I kind of want that, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be friends with everybody out here. So appreciate that. Also, got these questions off nurseslabs.com. Nurses, meaning more than one. Labs, meaning more than one. Miss Amanda, thank you for the heart. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. So, um, yeah, nurseslabs.com. All right. Make sure you guys go over there and check those out. Also, if you're in school or if you're about to start the semester, they have really good care plans. So make sure you guys go over there and check that out as well. OK. And also, I want to know who you are, where you're from and where you are at in your nursing journey. If you're not a nurse, what you doing here rocking with us? All right. Here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is B, the client who is six months pregnant with abdominal pain and the client with facial lacerations and a broken arm. Uh, The pregnant client and the client with a broken arm and facial lacerations are the best choice for placing in the same room. Cohorting a patient's according or sorry, cohorting of patients according to the presence or absence of specific pathogens coupled with conventional hygienic precautions can lead to a decrease in incidence and prevalence of chronic infections uh, with these two species. Wherefore, patient cohorting is now an integral component of infection control in patients. Once again, that is a assi- that's an assignment type of question, right? Safe and effective care environment, all right? Which has what management of care, largest section on the NCLEX, right? What largest section on the NCLEX 11 to 23%, all right? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something right now. I do coaching for the NCLEX, right? Where I do this big, I, we come up with all these, we come up with this this care, this plan for you, this tracker, all this good stuff. You get to talk to me one-on-one, you get my phone number, you know, you, you get all that stuff, right? So if anybody is studying for the NCLEX and they need help with the NCLEX, you guys can check me out at thebootnurse.com slash coaching, where you get in-depth time with me to help you conquer your NCLEX, all right? Hey, and there's something else. I failed my NCLEX, y'all, three times. Three times. You want to know the biggest thing that helped is that I had a mentor that actually guided me. All right. So there's nothing wrong with getting a mentor. Mentors help. 
they help you get to from point A to point B. All right. So never be afraid or ashamed of the fact that you had to do that. I failed three times, passed on the fourth. You can't tell me no different. Are in here, you world. I use you world, didn't like it. So you were all these other reviews that are out there, they're great, but they may not work for you. You world did not work for me for the multiple times that I used it. So did not work for me. So I'm not a big fan of you world like that. But I tell people, hey, it's out there. It's out there. I passed in 78 questions. Shout out to you. Here we go. Question 26. The nurse is caring for a six-year-old client admitted with a diagnosis of conjunctivitis. Before administering eye drops, the nurse should recognize that it is essential to consider which of the following. Is it A, the eye should be cleansed with warm water, removing any uh, exudate before instilling uh, the eye drops? The, uh, the child should be allowed to instill his own eye drops, or is it C, the mother should be allowed to instill the eye drops, or is it D, if the eye is clear from any redness or edema, the eye drops should be held. What are we thinking? Shout out to all 800 plus of y'all. Shout out to all 800 plus of y'all. What are y'all thinking? What are we thinking? Oops, sorry, y'all. Here we go. There we go. What did I use to study? I use a lot of things. I had board vitals. I had Saunders. I had... Uh, UWorld, I had Hearst, I used Mark Clemick, I used Kaplan. I spent a total of almost $3,000 between reviews and freaking, uh, you know, uh, applying for applications as well as Pearson View before I finally passed. And once again, I have no shame in that. I have no shame in that at all. So some people read, some people are readers, some people aren't. Some people like, I can't do you world. I didn't use Archer, but I do coach people with Archer's questions for sure. Here we go, y'all. Here's our answer in three, two. Thank you for the donut, Miss Margaret. Appreciate you. I like simple nursing. Simple nursing's cool. I never used it. I, li I liked his YouTube channel, which was cool too. So uh, here we go. So the answer is A, the eye should be cleansed with warm water, removing any exudate uh, before instilling the eye drops. Before instilling the eye drops, the nurse should cleanse the area with water. Cleanse the eyelids and lashes with cotton balls or gauze. Uh, pledge its moistened with normal saline or water. This prevents debris from or uh, this prevents debris uh, prevents debris to be carried into the eye when the conjunctival sac is exposed. Wow, that is a I don't even like the way that that was written, but whatever. Um, yeah, when you guys are studying content Q and A rationales, this is how it is solidified into those brains of yours. All right. That is how it's solidified into the brain. All right. You have to. There is no tricks to the NCLEX. It's called putting in the work. If you want to call that a trick. Sure. I call it putting in the work. All right. We're on the road to 50,000 likes. Y'all We're on the who gave me lights? Miss, Miss Doc, Dr. Shirley, Miss Ma'am. I appreciate you. Here we go. Question 27. The nurse is discussing re, uh, meal planning with the mother of a two year old toddler, which the following statements, if made by the mother, would require a need for further instruction. So what did the mom say that was incorrect that we need to be like, look, Miss Lady, um, that's wrong. And this is what this this is what it is. Um, it, it is OK to give. My child, white grape juice for breakfast. My child uh, can have a grilled cheese sandwich for lunch. Uh, we are going on a camping trip this weekend and I have brought hot dogs to grill for his lunch. For a snack, my child can have ice cream. Oh, well, I'm pretty sure any child would love to have ice cream all the time. So what are we thinking, y'all? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? All right, y'all. What are we thinking? Shout out to all 900 plus y'all. We're doing NCLEX questions. Got them off nurseslabs.com. They're for RNs and LPNs. RNs and LPNs. All right. Hey, something else I want to bring to you guys' attention. 60 to 70 percent of your NCLEX are still going to be multiple choice and select all that apply. The other 30 to 40 percent will be in the form of a case study where they ask you the different the questions are delivered differently to you, like your bow ties, your anticipated versus not anticipated, so on and so forth. I have an I have an NCLEX review that I'm going to show everybody at the end of this. And I'm going to show you guys what it looks like on the inside. That way you guys can see the caliber of the questions that you could expect on the NCLEX exam. OK, so make sure you guys at the end, you guys stick around. All right. So here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. I have six kids. I, I definitely know this, ma'am. You all right. What is what you put? I don't even know what you picked, Amanda. But here we go. And the answer is C. Uh, we are going on a camping trip this weekend and I have bought hot dogs to grill for his lunch. Remember ABC. Somebody said it in there. It's a choking hazard, Kevin. First of all, I heard you and I seen you. All right. So remember the ABCs when answering this question. A hot dog is the size uh, and shape of the child's trachea and poses a risk of aspiration. It is important to avoid foods that may cause choking like slippery foods such as grapes, 
large pieces of meat, poultry, and hot dogs, candy, and cough drops. That is health promotions and maintenance, which is a smaller section, 9 to 15% on the NCLEX, still very important, but a little bit smaller section. It says, uh, it says not to mention you are camping in the middle of nowhere. Um, I mean, camping nowadays is like, you know, you go to camping sites and, you know, they got little they got little stores and stuff there. So it all just depends. It really all just depends. On the road to 50,000 likes, ladies and gentlemen, question number 28. A two-year-old toddler is admitted to the hospital, right? So paint the picture. Which of the following nursing interventions would be expected? So what would you expect to do for a two-year-old coming into your emergency room if they got admitted or if they got admitted to your floor? Is it A, ask the parent or guardian to leave the room when assessment are being when assessments are being performed? Is it uh, ask the parent or guardian to take the, uh, the child's favorite blanket home because anything from outside should not be brought to the hospital? Ask the parent or guardian uh, to the room or to room in with the child? Or is it D, if the child is screaming, tell him this is inappropriate behavior. What are we thinking? Shout out to all 875 of y'all. I want to know if you're new here, only if you're new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. And if you're not a nurse, what are you doing here hanging out with us? By the way, if you're a patient care tech, uh, 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 a CNA, uh, a respiratory therapist, occupational therapist, x-ray, freaking pharmacy, lab, I fucking love y'all. And I'm going to tell y'all right now because we really could not do the shit that we need to do without all those ancillary services. Right. And the, and those people don't y'all don't get enough of the respect. People are just like, oh, you know, they're just that. No, 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 no. We don't do that. We don't do that around here. We don't do that. And I check people all the time. I'm like, yo, you talk to your mom like that, bro. Like, don't be disrespecting somebody because they don't have that level of education that you have yet. Some people forget that they got to leave that job. You know what I mean? So. And I don't say that to be threatening. It's just like some people really be out of pocket and you got to really check them. And I check people all the time. I'm like, hey, don't talk to people like that. I don't know what I don't know where you grew up, but it ain't around here. Here we go. Here's our answer, y'all. Here is our answer in three, two. And the answer is C, ask the parent or guardian to room in with the child. Why? Because that's what you're supposed to do. The nurse should encourage rooming in to promote parent-child attachment. It is okay for the parents to be in the room for assessment of the child. Toddlers have a strong fear of strangers <clears throat> and they may feel like they are losing control and autonomy when they are at the hospital. Explain the procedure to them at the level of their understanding to further prevent anxiety. That is physiological integrity, which follows with physiological adaptation, which is the third largest section on the NCLEX exam at 11 to 17 percent. All right. So. All right, here we go on to the next one. Here we go. Question number 29. Which instruction should be given to the client who is fitted for a behind the ear hearing aid? Is it A, remove the mold and um, clean every week? Is it B, uh, store the hearing aid in a warm place? C, uh, was it clean the lint from the hearing aid with a toothpick? Or is it D, change the batteries weekly? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Shout out to all 700 plus of y'all in here rocking with me. Got these questions off nurseslabs.com. Hey, make sure you guys, if you guys are interested, got an ebook, got a uh, got an NCLEX course, all that good stuff. You guys go check, check that out. Uh, the links are in my bio. Also, there's a freebie over there, 42 page freebie where I go over those important things that you need to know for the NCLEX. There's a couple of ones that are in there where it talks about, you know, trigger words that you need to look out for. You know what I'm saying? So it says, when is your next live? It's Friday. Next live is Friday. Hey, make sure you guys are here on Friday. I may, I may or may not have a surprise for you. Uh, so it would behoove you to be here. <laughs> uh, I crack myself up. Here we go. Here's, here's our answer, y'all. Here is our answer in three, two. And the answer is B, store the hearing aid in a warm place, 5.30 Central Standard Time. The uh, the hearing aid should be stored in a warm, dry place. Proper maintenance and care will extend the life of your hearing aid. Uh, make it a habit to keep hearing aids away from heat and moisture. Avoid using hairspray or other hair care products while wearing hearing aids. All right, that is health promotions and maintenance, 9 to 15% on the NCLEX. Smaller section, but still very important. Remember, there are eight sections to the NCLEX plan that did that just got updated. It just got updated April 1st of this year. It's not a joke, not a game. <laughs> I don't know why they picked that day. They could have picked another day, but they did that day. So anyways, that just got updated, all right? So make sure you guys are understanding. These are where the questions are coming from. These are where the questions are coming from, okay? Here we go. Question number 30. A priority nursing diagnosis for a child being admitted for surgery following a tonsillectomy is 
What is the body image disturbance, impaired verbal communication, risk for aspiration or pain? Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Think about it. Think about it. For those trick question, risk for bleeding. OK. Mm, OK. Is it, though? Is it, though? C for common sense. No, 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 no. It's not common sense, Sarah, because people that are in here have not gotten to this place yet. So you can't say that it's common sense. Can't do that. Airway. OK. C again and again. OK. Got someone saying B. OK. And that's OK. Hey, if you get it wrong, that's OK. This is why you do this. This is why you practice. Is this practice for everyone? Yes. Yeah, for whoever wants to answer. Airway on fleek. No, you did not say fleek. Who still, who still says that? You know what? I ain't judging you. I ain't judging you. Learning process. Absolutely. Absolutely. Bleeding. OK. I'm give you all 10 seconds. 10 seconds, y'all. 10 seconds. Here we go. Going to bring out my inner house. Lord of mercy. Priority, priority, main word. There you go. Priority is the main word. All right. Here we go, y'all. Here is our answer in three, two. And the answer is C, not for common sense, but for risk for aspiration. Always remember ABCs when selecting an answer. All right. Place the uh, the child prone or side laying position. Freaking uh, promote drainage of blood and unswallow saliva from the mouth that could potentially be aspirated. Right. Physiological adaptation. Third largest section on the NCLEX at 11 to 17 percent. Somebody that has a tonsillectomy will most definitely have all not only just a bleeding, but most importantly, an airway issue. Right. They have frequent swallowing. Hey, we're starting. Hey, we're starting to have a problem bleeding. Right. It can aspirate. Right. So you got a lot of things that are going on. I'm not even nursing. I got it right. Hell yeah. That's that's cool. Tabitha. Can I call you Tabby? You know, what I'm saying Tabby, you got it. You know, what I'm saying. So remember when you guys are studying, that's how it is. Pain is pain is expected because they just came from a surgery. Right. But I, they are at risk for aspiration. Right. That is important. That is important. Here we go. Here we go, y'all. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it tonight. For the questions on this Wednesday night, I want to thank everybody for coming and hanging out. Hey, but I am going to do an ask me anything right after this. You know what I'm saying? Ask me anything to follow the NCLEX questions. That's why I do it. That's why I hear Sarah. Yes, 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 yes. We got we got to go. So don't abandon us. What you mean? I'm here every week, girl. What you mean? Hold up. Hold up. Let's do eight. No, 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 no. Can I use a course for? Yes, you can use the course forever. It's it's for a lifetime. It is for a lifetime. And, and that means yours and your descendants if they if they have the email and the login and the password. So um, it says, what about the NCLEX stuff at the end? What NCLEX stuff? Well, oh, I'm going to show y'all. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you right now. All right, y'all. So, hey, but of course, I had to ban a bunch of bots. I wish I could have banned some real people because I'm petty at the end, like over 9,000. All right. So I'm about to show you guys what the course looks like. So when you guys go to the bootnurse.com slash special, we're going to end up right here. You're going to look at my glorious face. Right. Talking about conquering and clicks. That's my room and all that good jazz. You can either click this. That'll take you all the way down there or you can scroll through. We'll scroll through. We go through the summary of what the NCLEX course talks about, what all we talk about. And then uh, let's see. Let's see. Curriculum. Hey, so I'm updating this all the time, y'all. I uploaded four videos today and I'm going to upload another two within the next two days. OK, so. Also, hey, you get part of the Facebook group, bro. Look at me, y'all. Look at me on the handsome dude working at the burn center. You know what I'm saying? That was great. A little bit about me. Talk about who the course is for. Hey, some stories from some other nurses that I've helped. And there you go, right there, right there. And then once you decide that you want to go in there and you want to, you know, check it out, this is what you get right here, right? So I'm going to go down. So we'll talk about the new generation NCLEX, right? So new generation NCLEX video right there, right? But I'm going to show you another one. Right. So we'll go here and then we'll go here and then you guys can see that. Right. So the way the way that the structure goes is that I'll go over the question. We'll talk about it. Right. And then we'll break it down. Where'd I find it? Where'd I find it? I lost it. Oh, my God. Hold on one sec. Y'all. There we go. So there's your case study right there. There's your case study right there for the NCLEX. Right. When we go over case studies together and then to follow that case study, we give you a multiple choice question. You're going to get at least six questions per case study for the new generation NCLEX alone by itself. This review where I have freaking eight videos. I'm going to show you where I have eight videos right here, right? That's four hours worth of content where I go over a hundred questions. So you're so funny, bro. This isn't for me. What you mean? This isn't even for me. And I just finished finals. That's okay. Wait, what do you mean this isn't for you? What you mean? Is it Lucia? What do you mean? So anyway, so we go through this right here 
right? And then look, we go through more questions. You'll see pauses pop up there because that's my indicator to tell y'all, hey, pause the video and work through it and then come back and we'll go through it together. Select all that apply, right? We talk about those, your close or your drop downs, right? Uh, we have anticipated versus not anticipated, right? So this is all going over that important NCLEX stuff and keeping you familiar. The rest of the case study, we update the case studies as we go along, so on and so forth. But here's another one I want, I want you guys to see. So I'm going to go to number seven, right? Look at that. Bow tie. You just passed. Hey, is a baby. That's what I'm talking about. You just passed. Hey, hey you already know what the deal is. Y'all show baby some love. Who is that? Baby, 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 Jean, baby Jean. You just passed. Congratulations to you. You already know the deal. Medications to focus on. Look, you want to talk about medications? I'm gonna show you right now. So I have a, a pharmacology section that has 18 videos. I'm just a I'm just a business major. Oh, I got you. I got you, Lucy. I got you. So look. The pharmacology, doses, calculations, infectives, antibiotics, antivirals. Look, I'm going to show you this. is I don't know why. I'm so proud of this one. The, 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 what is it? The cardiovascular meds. Look, we go over, we talk about the different cardiac meds. I give what the intro, we talk about the medications and then we jump right into it. We jump right into it, right? Let me see if y'all can see that. Yeah, we jump right into it. So talk about ARBs, ACE inhibitors, right? We talk about beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, we talk about what else? Uh, your statins, anticoagulants, antiplatelets, your diuretics, digoxin, vasodilators, antiarrhythmic medications, right? So like your cardiozam drips, amiodarone, contraindications, the nursing considerations that you need to do and that you need to know as a nurse when you're doing those, right? So we go over a whole bunch of them, right? And like I said, hey, by the way, all of the content videos right, where we're going over lessons and lectures, you get a downloadable. So the same PowerPoint I'm going over, you guys can print it out or you guys can download it and print it out. It's like, that's for you, for you to print out and take notes on, right? If that's the way that you study, okay? And so look, we talk about other things such as what? This is like the computer adaptive test and the passing standards and the NCLEX test plan. Also, this is what I uploaded today, right? They're all kind of essentially out of order. And every video, y'all, is under 30 minutes. It says, where is this available? You can check the link in my bio up here. All right. And I'll show you and I'll show you guys. It says, uh, Adriana, Kevin, I told you I would hop on here to tell you I passed my NCLEX. I did. Adriana. Yes, ma'am. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, y'all already know the deal. Y'all know what to do. Give Adriana our love right now. Do it. Do it. Me who's first semester still watching this. Hey, that's OK, because guess what? It's still knowledge that you're acquiring. It's still knowledge that you're acquiring. That's the whole point, right? So what we go over physiological adaptation, right? And let me show y'all. Look, we talk about what is in the client the client needs categories. These are all the things, right? All the things, and it's a two parter, right? And then look, we jump right into questions, right into questions. And then guess what? I'm gonna show you guys another one. I'm gonna show you guys once I can find it. Oh, it's not on this one. I'm gonna show you guys. Give me one sec. So on part two, whoopsie. But in part two, we go over a case study. We go over a case study and they're kind of they're kind of spread out sporadically. So, yeah, look right there. Case study. Right. Thanks, everyone. You got. Hey, yeah. Hey, Adriana, if you can give one, if you can give advice to anybody or I will, if you could give, you know, a piece of advice to people about the NCLEX, especially being somebody who was unsuccessful the first time, you know, what advice would you be able to what advice would you give them? All right. Hey, so look, look, risk, you know, at risk, not at risk. Right. Uh, what else? What else we got? Right. We talk about uh, that's another continuing one. We got indicated versus not indicated. You know, when we're talking about that, we have our closed down ones where we answer in our questions. Right. Those are like our Dropbox. You know what I mean? And then we have our multiple choice, our select, all that apply. So, what, like I said, once you guys get this, it's yours. You get this with yours. Was you world helpful for anyone? I personally didn't like you world, but you world, you world works for people. But for me, it just didn't work. Hey, what's up, everybody? What's up? Hey, that was the course. If anybody is interested at all in anything. So if you're looking for the NCLEX course, if you're looking for freaking the uh, the NCLEX victory guide, check those links out in my bio. All right. It says show up every day, even if you feel defeated. Uh, you didn't come this far. To, uh, yeah, you didn't come this far. Hey, I got you to not be successful. Correct. You want to know what your success looks like, Adriana? It, it it looks like shattered glass glued back together. And that's exactly how it is. You know, everybody goes in like because you felt like you were broken. You felt like you were defeated when you took that exam the first time. You're like, shit, how am I going to get back? How am I going to get through this? Right. You pulled yourself back together. You learned from your mistakes and then you went on and you took care of business. Right. So congratulations to you again for getting out there. 
uh, and doing your thing. It says, what is the website again? The website is theboopnurse.com slash special. Or you can go up here to the link in my bio. You may have to click it twice to get to my main page where all my videos are. Click that link, which is a link tree, and it'll bring up everything that's in there and you'll be able to see it. All right. I said, seriously, only relax the day before. Yeah, don't I hey, do not take the exam the day. I mean, do not try to cram the day before. I'm tell you why, because if you don't know it by then, you don't know it at all. All right. So don't play yourself. Don't do that. Uh, what did you do differently when you passed the third time? I. I so I actually failed three times and I passed on the fourth. So a lot of time it was accountability. I didn't have time management. I didn't have. Uh, I got a mentor. Um, I uh, essentially had to cut everybody off. There's a lot of things. It says Dr. Sharon and Mark Clinic strategy is a must. No, it's not. It, it was a must for you. It was a must for you. But if that is the combination, Missy, if that worked for you, then that's great. Because I can tell you right now, I don't know who Dr. Sharon is, but I didn't use her. I used Mark Clinic, but I used UWorld, didn't work. Hearst, didn't work. Bore Vitals, trash, didn't work for me, right? So it all depends on you and what type of learner you are in order for you to absorb, um, you know, that medication. She's with Mark K. Oh, I don't know what that means. What do you mean she's with Mark K? Like she dating him? Did I miss something? Mark K is that dude, though. Hell yeah, guy. Hey, what's up, Monet? How are you? You world helped me pass on the first time. Shout out. Is it uh, Kisana? Kishana, Kishana, shout out to you. Uh, do you have videos on YouTube? So I do have every live that I do will go up on YouTube. So you can go to my YouTube right now, which is at the boot nurse. It is at the boot nurse. You'll be able to see all the videos from my lives. That'll be up there as well. OK, uh, what is it? What is it? Mark Clemic review on YouTube. So, yeah, you can find a Mark Clemic review on YouTube. But also remember is that. Unless he has an updated review that people recorded and put in there, that review is old. Now, I'm not saying that it's not good, but it is old. I still love it. I love it because it makes sense. Uh, I work with a guy who failed five times. He's an awesome RN. And you want to know what's crazy? No one is ever going to ask you, ever. Hey, how many times you take the exam? No one cares. Dr. Sharon is Mark K's niece. Nuh-uh. Stop it. You lie. The lies you tell. Uh, hey, you world or Archer? I don't know which to buy. Um, I personally like Archer. That's me, though. Uh, what does it say? It says I failed boards and it looked like Archer. OK, so a lot of people will say the same thing. I failed boards. It looked like Archer. I failed boards and it looked like you world. Or I've had people say I've seen five or six questions that I had on boards that were exactly from you world. So it all just depends. I could tell you right now that you world and Archer and, and Kaplan, they, they the format that they have look like NCLEX. The NCLEX format or the NCLEX software is very, very basic. Like there's not there's nothing, you know, frou frou about it. Archer. OK, uh, they have a business together. OK, cool. Shout out to them. Archer is cheaper. Archer is cheaper. Archer is cheaper. Um, Archer is kind of like a la carte. So like you, there's certain things that you can get for a short amount of time. And then you have to, you know, you pay a little bit extra. What is the difference between an LPN and an RN scope of practice? Uh, but to each their own. Good luck, everyone. Yep. Shout out to you, Miss Missy. Uh, how do you deal with professors in a program who don't who doesn't want you to succeed? Uh, you have to ignore them. And also what I would do is I would keep a journal of, of, of the professors uh, of any type of wrongdoing, discrimination or disrespect. That way, if it does come down to it, you can uh, report that program to the Board of Nursing because you as a student have that right to do that, especially if they're being discriminatory against you. Uh, what do you recommend for somebody who failed boards for the first time? Uh, I would recommend first thing that you do is get your performance breakdown sheet, see where you didn't do well, and then you start there. So if pharmacology is it, that's where you need to start. You need to put yourself on a schedule, put yourself uh, you need to do a time management schedule. You need a tracker so you can see where you're not doing well or where you're doing well at, you know, and then, you know, get yourself content. Get yourself a question bank. Uh, Kev, thanks you for uh, for uh, what's this, Kev? Thanks for all you do for us every day. I hope your family and son are having a great. Oh, we're, uh, Camille, I appreciate you. Hey, you know, we you know we good over here. And uh, what is an LPN? An LPN is a licensed practical nurse. I definitely agree. Mark Klimek may uh, be outdated due to NCLEX generation format. So. Kishana, I'm glad that you said that. So here's the thing about the NCLEX. The NCLEX itself, the only thing, the only thing that relatively changed was how the questions were delivered to you. The content is still the same. When the content changes, it changes like every three to five years, but it's so small that you would never really know it, right? Like it's like 5%. You know what I mean? But the the way that the questions delivered to you is the only thing that's different. It's like case studies and just like how I was just how I turned the camera around and I showed everybody like, hey, this is the format of the question is what it's going to look like. You're going to get a case study. You know, you may have some highlights. You know, you may have some closed drop down questions. You may have the bow tie matrix grid. It all just depends. 
Uh, do you think starting in critical care as a new grad is feasible? Yes. I, I started in the ICU and I worked ICU for a little over a year. And then I was just like, all right, I'm burnt out and I don't want to be here anymore. So I left. LPNs work on stable patients while RNs do unstable and delegate to, yes, they do, 100%. Is one month of preparing for NCLEX enough? I always tell people, give yourself at least a month, but no longer than three months, because after three months, you know, it's just like, what are, what are you really doing? At three months, it's either you're going to, it's either shit or get off the pot at that point. You know what I mean? But I think not, uh, 30 to 90 days is good. However, it all just depends on where you are in your studying. So like, if you're in school, I think that you really should be studying like a month or a month, a month and a half out before you graduate. And then you give yourself another month because you're waiting for the your authorization to test to come through so you can uh, uh, so you can schedule your, your your test. So that way that gets you up to like that two and a half, three month mark of studying before you go and take your exam. What about boot camp? What about it? I don't I don't I've never used them before. Uh, what's a good test to determine your weakness uh, and where to focus? Um, I mean, there's a lot of these programs out there that have diagnostic tests that can t- that tell you that, you know. So, you know, Archer has it. UWorld has it. Uh, Hearst has it. Kaplan has it, you know. So uh, finished nursing school in 2015 and having my transcripts evaluated. Can't wait to buy your course. I, hey, Cur- Curvy Marthy, I appreciate you. Make sure you guys go over there and check that out. I, like I said, I updated. I uploaded four videos in there today specifically talking about physiological adaptation, which is one of the eight client needs on NCLEX, right? I, there's two videos. Both of them are about 27 minutes long. Uh, and then I uploaded basic care and comfort. Uh, hopefully within the next day or so, I'm going to be uploading pharmacology. I'm still editing management of care, which is a monster. And then um, it's going to be, you know, a little bit of here and there before the next uh, before the next batch comes through. Because, hey, one man army making some things happen. Uh, what do you uh, what do you recommend for content? I already failed twice. Is it Glor- Gloria or Glory Glory PR? Uh, I mean, you can get content from anywhere. Like I'm always, I'm always going to suggest and recommend my course, the seven day and clicks course right now, when it comes to content, you can get it from YouTube. You can get it from getting another course, but I'm always going to recommend my, the seven day and clicks course. Right. And also I do coaching, you know what I'm saying? Like you can get on a one-on-one call with me and I can tell you directly, like, as in like, Hey, this is what we got. This is what you got going on. Right. Because remember I was in y'all's shoes. It doesn't matter. I've taken my exam for the first time. But I didn't pass it. So now I have to go on to another section to where I have to take my exam again. So now I'm in another portion of my journey. So people that have failed, I know exactly what you I know. I know exactly what it feels like. You know what I mean? So if you need help like that, I can I got you on that as too. So uh, is it a bad idea to start in peds if that's where I really want to be? No, Taylor, if you want to go to peds, go to peds. I'm studying for my LP in 2024. I'm nervous. Any advice? Don't be nervous. If you're scared, go to church. But if you start your LPN. If you start studying for your LPN right now, if you get into the habit of practicing, and this is for uh, DW laughs, if you get into the habit of practicing, like by the time you go and take that exam, all that exam is going to be is a glorified practice exam. That's it. But you're if you prepare for it and you do all the steps in between before you get up to your exam, you're not going to have a problem. You're not going to have a problem at all. I had to file a grievance against my school. They tortured all the students and now are shut down. Look at that. Look at that. Hey, anybody that's in school, if you have a program that is discriminatory against you that, you know, are are using it like the good old girls club because nursing is 89 percent women or if they're just trying to like purposely trying to push you out, you need to be documenting that and you need to report them. That's how that goes. It says plus waiting for your ATT. Uh, If you're a May. Yep. I'm telling you right now, May. uh, Listen, May, June, July. Crazy, crazy at the testing centers. Uh, what's the next live, please? The next live is going to be Friday at 530 Central Standard Time. Camille says, do you still work in the hospital or uh, and work your course? So when I initially started, yes, but now I'm doing I'm work. I work from home doing this every day with y'all. Well, every other day with y'all, but, you know, every day on my course and all this other stuff. So I will take mine in March. Shout out to you, LP and RN. Shout out. Hey, shout out to you. Is it Monet? Mm, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm married to a pastor, so we always are at church. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, if you're scared, go to church. You have to go to church. Girl, just go to church. You good out there. You good out there. Uh, have you taught nursing? Have you taught nursing school or are you working in a hospital? So never taught in nursing school. I actually did apply to work at multiple different nursing schools as an adjunct instructor, but they never called me back. So I just continued to do what I do and make an impact. And this is how I'm making that impact, talking to y'all. Um, and do I work in a hospital right now? Technically, I'm still employed at the hospital, but I'm on short term disability because I got hurt at work. And that's what happens when you uh, get hurt at work. You know, 
Yeah, take responsibility for that. That's how that happens. Uh, they say nurses eat their young. I had a teacher like that. I'm telling you, they do that. Advocate for yourself, 100. Uh, percent What exam will you uh, under? Wait, what exam will you undertake for you to become an LPN? So, Power Bank, you will take the NCLEX PN exam. That's what you'll take. Do you think I need to study hard or do OB? Yes. Or wait, do you mean OB? Uh, I mean OB is part of maternity, which is part of the which is part of NCLEX. So. Uh, I would think you would need to study just as efficiently as you would study for everything else. Um, but if that's a hard section for you, I think I would I would assume and I would recommend that you allocate maybe 30 minutes to an hour every day to every other day learning that uh, or acquiring more knowledge of that. If I want to work as a nurse in a surgery room, how do I go about becoming a surgical nurse? Well, is it Chrissy? Chrissy, I'm glad you asked. All you need to do is find what they call a perioperative or an OR nursing, OR as an Oscar and Romeo. Um, you need to find a program that has that. I mean, find a residency program and then you can go straight into being an OR nurse and you can work in surgeries, becoming a circulating nurse. And then you could become what they call a scrub nurse where you actually get to go up to the bed and you can actually uh, participate in the surgeries. You can then go to be what they call an RNFA, which stands for a registered nurse first assist, where you can assist the doctor with more scope of practice. And then if you decided to go even further, you could go uh, and be what they call a surgical nurse practitioner where you could work with a surgeon all day, every day. But you're as a nurse practitioner, you work in the clinic with them as well as you do surgeries with them in the operating room. Uh, what made you a good test taker practice summer? I mean, tons and tons of practice. You are a blessing for helping us. Thank you, Ms. DW. You are welcome. I will. I was not I was not allowed to attend my clinical rotation in my first semester because of my head covering. Sarah, what do you mean? What do you mean? No, Q Bank, not OB. Hold on. Let me see. Let me see exactly what you said. It says, do you think I need to study hard or do I need a Q Bank? Uh, I, I always recommend people that you get a Q Bank as well as you have content. Like because one of the things one of the things that I always felt like I didn't have was enough content. And so when I studied for NCLEX, that's where I I couldn't even remember some of the other things. So I was just like, man, if I had content, I wouldn't have this problem. So that was one of the issues that I fixed for myself. And so content questions and answers with rationales. Uh, what does it say? It says uh, I had so much OB maternity on my on my NCLEX. I had a lot of cardiac. I had a lot of cardiac. I had a lot of farm. And I was and that was my heavy area that I didn't do so well. And then when I got when I got the NCLEX, I was kill, I was just like, click, click. I'm like, oh, yeah, man, I know what I know. I know what, you know, like Center Pro will do. You know, I knew. Look, I'm trying to tell you, I knew what they were doing. Uh, they didn't mean. Uh, oh, I got you. I got you, Camille. I got you. Uh, if I buy your 70 NCLEX course after how long does it expire? Nadia, you have it forever. You have it. You have it until you expire. And then you could just give it to your descendants. If that makes sense. You know what I mean? It says, uh, it says, uh, oh, God, if I get cardiac, I'm dead. No. Nah, is it is it uh, is it Tala? Is it Tala? Is that how you say it? Look, I'm trying to. Hey, here's the thing. For those that want to go and work in the ICU, your medications are. I mean, you have to know your medications everywhere. But I'm telling you, you got to be a medication guru if you want to go do all those things. Would you recommend? No, I would not. Oh, as a way of studying, I would not recommend Quizlet. Me personally, I would not recommend Quizlet for NCLEX. Now, if you're in nursing school, that's a different story because here's the thing with nursing school. Nursing schools make their own exams. Nine times out of the 10, the nursing school exams are on Quizlet. They're on Quizlet. Now, your NCLEX exam questions are not on Quizlet, right? That's another thing. And, this, and the third thing is like your exit exams per your classes are going to be like either exit HESIs or exit ATIs, which are not going to be on freaking Quizlet. Uh, what QBank would you recommend? I personally like I personally like Archer. That's just me. And the only reason I'm even recommending Archer right now is because I'm working on my own QBank that I'm going to be putting inside the course. So anyways, I like Archer because Archer is not so heavy in the pocket and I, I like their questions a lot. Uh, do you have any farm material for sale? So Camille, I have pharmacology. I have pharmacology, uh, uh, content inside of the course. And I believe it was you who had asked me specifically about farm, but I actually created an ebook like a couple days ago, just strictly on pharmacology. However, I have to clean it up and I got to get everything taken care of. But Camille, 
keep talking to me. We're going to make some stuff happen. It says, yes, uh, my school uses ATI and they are not on whiskey. They're not. Oh, you mean Quizlet? I got you. I passed using Archer. Is it Hagen? Is that how you say your name? Hagen. Got you. It says, hurry, I test soon. Look, okay, I got you. Wait, when do you test? Don't you test like in January, Camille? I think that's what we talked about, right? I used Kaplan the past first time. Shout out to you, Jillian. I used Kaplan the fourth time and then I passed. You know, so to each their own. Shout out to all 200 of y'all. Hey, if you guys are finding value or have found value in any way, shape or form, Make sure you guys smash that like button. Check out what I got going on over here in the links in my bio. I test January 5th. Okay, is it uh is it Nika? Okay, Kaz calling me at look, Camille, you said it, not me. What do you think about U World? I personally not a fan of U World. I've used U World three times, and for me, it just didn't work. I used Hearst past the first time. I tried to use Hearst, but look, let me tell you, let me tell you something about Aunt Marlene Hurst. All right, she from Mississippi, y'all. And very intelligent woman has been around for quite some time. But that accent is in what we call in the educator realm an environmental distraction to me. And it just did not work. Now, I've coached people who have used Archer and Hearst for content, and they love her. They love it. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've helped people that use Remar. I've helped people that use Kaplan. I, I can help you do whatever when it comes to coaching you through the NCLEX. Like right now, I'm coaching about six people. I had a call last night with a young woman who is killing it. But she's using Archer for her content and for her questions. I'm like, cool, let's talk about it. You know, she wasn't doing all that well. And now she's freaking, I mean, like, I mean, scoring super high. You got to keep the confidence, right? So you got to find those programs that work for you. Sometimes, you know, it takes, I know people are just like, man, I don't want to spend this money. Look, y'all spend, y'all spend money blindly on BS. And I mean, like, I don't, and I'm going to talk to the women because it's 89% of y'all that are in here, right? Let's talk about what were you going to Starbucks? Let's talk about let's talk about all the clothes that you buy. Let's talk about I don't know. You like Tory Burch. You like sandals. You know what I'm saying? Like on, on, on frivolous things. But when I talk about investing in something so you don't have to take this exam multiple times or if you do taking something that is going to expand your mind so you can understand what you're talking about. It's just like, oh, oh my God, why? That's you. That's what you sound like. If you find in value, smash that like button. All right. So understand where you with the difference between buying something and investing all right so i talked about you world we talked about that uh, i take my pn soon i graduate on tuesday uh i can register afterwards you can you talking about for the NCLEX? you can you can uh you can will you register once you get your authorization to test you got your i got you oh it says i take my NCLEX soon i uh i got my att on monday shell when do you take it oh you're taking a pn okay i'm terrified don't be terrified i'm a nurse from malaysia shout out to you is it is it Hannah? Shout out to Miss Hannah from Malaysia. I don't think I've ever had anybody in here from Malaysia before. What would you recommend to use when patho, uh, when using patho and farm classes? Uh, honestly, YouTube. And there's a really good, I think, a me, is it the Amoeba Sisters? That's really good. Um, for patho, I have a whole list of YouTube channels that I would recommend to people, but I don't have them right here in front of me. So, uh, but definitely YouTube. I think the Ami oh, Osmosis is a good one. Osmosis is a good one. Uh, tips for nursing school. Uh, get your time management ready. Get, be, be ready to understand that time management. Because when you get to nursing school, baby, hold on. All right, that was really immature. But um, <laughs> when you get to nursing school, you're going to get humbled real quick. All right, so time management. Let Hey, if you got a family, kids, let them know. Hey, y'all got to fend for yourselves. Not really, but you got to have a sit down conversation if you got a family and friends and all this other stuff because time management, because nursing school is about to be your life. Trust me. All right. It says you write about that. That's what I'm saying. It says I start nursing school January 8th. This would uh, this will be interesting. It will be interesting. It will be very interesting. Uh, yes, I'm talking about registering for the test. OK, Ashley. But my instructor said we couldn't register. So you can't register. So here's the two things that you need. Well, I'm sorry. Here's the one thing that you need to register for the exam, which is your authorization to test. In order for an authorization to test to be sent to you, your school has to send your transcripts to your board of nursing. Your board of nursing is going to go through it and be like, all right, cool. They met all the requirements, yada, yada, yada. Now we can send that authorization to Pearson View to say that, hey, this person is good to go. And then Pearson View is then going to send you your authorization to test. That way you can schedule your exam. Um, I have a 2.0 undergrad GPA. What are your uh, what? What are my honest chances of getting into an ACC RN school? Is that breezy? Um, you can still get into a nursing school with a GPA like that. However, based off of how competitive nursing schools are, uh, my recommendation is that you need to fix that. 
you need to fix that ASAP because you're going up against people who have 3.5s to 4.0 GPAs. All right. Not saying that it's not impossible, but in the times that we're in right now, nursing schools are backed up like a year, two years, three. You know, you got to get in where you can fit in. So you better fix that. You got to fix that. You literally don't have time for anything. Facts. That's real. January 8th. I failed my second semester redoing this spring. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, delayed, never denied. I'm a psych nurse. Uh, we'll be taking the test in Canada. Okay. Uh, what can I use to study? Please. Thanks. So when he, the, my question is like, when exactly are you taking your NCLEX? And the second thing I always say, check out the seven day NCLEX course, which is up here. Uh, it's right now it's full of content. I have 60 videos that are in there right now and I'm adding two more within the next few days. Um, and it's a complete just process of growth. You get it for $97 and you have it for a lifetime. Carolina. What's up girl? How are you? How are you? Um, it says agreed. I just started my LPN program in October. Studying is my life now. That's it. It says, what about international nurses? Gentles, what about international nurses? You got to give me a little bit more context on what you're talking about. Not impossible. To, not a, not impossible. I have a 3.1 GPA. You got this. So, Lindsay, I agree. However, I will be inclined to disagree because I don't know how long you've been a nurse, so on and so forth. There are things that or I don't know how long you've been in school, but there are things that um, that that take higher priority. Right. But that's why they always say, hey, you want to try to get as many A's as you can. Uh, you know, you want to try to do really well on those interest exams. Right. Hey, here's another good thing that you guys need to know if you're trying to apply for nursing school. Go volunteer at the American Red Cross at your local hospital. Right. Because. Every nursing, I'm telling you, a nursing program loves to see somebody who uses their personal time to go and help other people out, right? Now, I'm not trying to tell you to go out there and volunteer at your at your local car wash or you know at a at a uh, at a food drive or whatever. We're talking about what the profession that you're trying to jump into. Go volunteer at the hospital, and then when you're finished volunteering, the Red Cross will write you a memo. Or like a, a letterhead or whatever telling about how great you are, the hours that you did, so on and so forth. Go ahead and slide that in because everything is based off of points. So go ahead and slide that in. Vol hey, do you have any volunteer stuff? Yes, I do. So that point, that those points that you get from volunteering could actually get you in and surpass the person that you were actually competing with and you don't even know it. You know what I'm saying? So think about that. If y'all find a value, smash that like button. Um, not impossible. Uh, how do you maintain your relationship in school? Communication. Communication. User 44, communication. That is how you do it. Um, I didn't really, I had a lot of it, but didn't have a lot of it when I was in school. Um, and, you know, it could be detrimental to a relationship. So you have to have communication. Delayed, never denied. I like, hey, ew, that's what I'm talking about. I finished nursing school tomorrow. Yes, ma'am, you do. Yes, ma'am, you do. Failed my first semester yesterday. Need to wait till August 24 to start again. Okay, user 25, think of the things that you can do in between there. You failed your first semester. Think about the things that you could do in between there to expand your knowledge. You've already been through the first semester, so you already know what to expect when you get back to your first semester. You see what I'm saying? You can't let the fact that you were unsuccessful your first time, let that determine how you are going to accomplish your goals going forward. OK, Sarah Dill says studying for my T's uh, just took my last pre-nursing micro final today. I actually like micro. Maybe I'm a nerd like that. So. But shout out to you, Miss Sarah. So you're about to go into nursing school as well. Here's one thing I'm going to tell you guys. If you guys check out the seven day NCLEX course, which is linked up in my bio, you get it. You pay for it one time and you have it the whole time. I have people that just started nursing that don't start nursing school until January that bought it. And so by the time they graduate, they're going to have a whole full list of freaking content videos that are going to be in there to help them take conquer that NCLEX. So make sure you guys Check that out for yourselves, okay? I'm from Kenya, okay? Uh, migrated to the U.S. last month. Sent my papers for verification. Power bank, I think we talked about that before. I think we talked about that. Uh, user 44 already said that. What is the function of the T's? Uh, I didn't have to take it to get in. Uh, will I have to take it later? What do you mean? You're talking about, what do you mean, uh, Dr. Awesomer? What do you mean? Is med surge hard in school? Med so the thing here's what's hard in school. It's about the, 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 the amount of information that they throw at you. That is just fucking it's crazy. Right. So you have to know how to migrate through that. Now, here's a suggestion. Hey, I'm about to put y'all on game. Smash that like button right now. Smash it right now. And I'm about to put you on game. OK, so check this out. When you get into med surge or even when you're about to start school. OK. Find you a group. Find you a group of people. Right. Four. you and three other people. And then split the work up, split the chapters up, 
right? Based off of what you're going to be tested on. Split the chapters up 25%, right? So if this is 16 chapters, you, every, each person gets four chapters. I do that on four, eight, 12. Yeah. So four chapters. You do, you go hard on those four chapters. The other person goes hard in those four chapters. The other person goes hard in the other four chapters until all 16 chapters are covered. And then you bring them together. You do 25% of the work and you reap 100% of the benefits. Now, be careful. you got to find a good group to do that with. And what this does, this fosters team building, especially when you get to that group project. And it fosters good team building for when you become a nurse. Y'all stop playing with me. Smash that like button. Go to my links. Check out my stuff. Hey, I'm doing this for y'all. You want to know why? Because I wish somebody would have did this for me. Uh, how to make money as a nurse. Um, what do you mean? Like you got to work. You got to go out there and put in the work. Uh, let me see what we got going on. Summer says something. I mean, what are the T's for? It's not a licensing exam. Uh, is it like the SATs for nursing school? So essentially, it's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like that. But what it does, it's just another roadblock, Dr. Osmer. It's just another roadblock to keep people out to see how serious you are. You want to know why? It's because nursing school doesn't want to get, you know, get that person that you went to high school with that shoes on fucking crayons. Because what that person's going to do, they're going to lower their pass rate, success rate. That's why they have these things. That's Why do you think they have, you know, all these years worth of prereqs? Why do you think they have an entrance exam? It's because they keep, it's to keep people out. That's what that means. All right. Uh, this is a uh, uh, tip. Tip to tip or tip to tip. Wow. Okay. Got to make sure that the study group is on the same page. Yes, exactly. Uh, can't have someone like that's exactly what it is. If you have anybody that's not pulling their weight, guess what you do? Get rid of that ass and find and bring somebody else in. I went through three groups before I found my group of girls that I rock with still to this day. Still to this day. If y'all go over to my Instagram, which is at the boot nurse, if you scroll all the way back down to 2018, you'll see Jennifer, Jennifer, and Valerie. And those three girls, with us four, what I just told you is what we did. And once we figured that out, because nursing school is not going to tell you that. Once we figured that out, oh, it was on and pop. Like, the re like once we got to med search, oh, the rest was easy. Med search two was Gucci. Psych was Gucci. Maternity was Gucci. Research was Gucci. Management transit. Look, we was Gucci out here. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do. You can't be letting some. Hey, the weakest link of your freaking group will cause you guys to be unsuccessful. So if you need to get rid of them, get rid of them. I'm so glad I found your page. Miss Summer Jade, I'm so glad you're here. So glad that you're here. Camille, what's up? Camille, where'd you go? Did you leave? I honestly don't make any connections like that in my program. Ma'am. Well, I would suggest that you try. I honestly didn't make any. Oh, so you're probably not in school anymore. So me, I had. So the thing about it, I'm a social butterfly. So I had to do it. I had to do it for me. I just got here. I'm extra late. Yeah, you extra late. We, we, we done done. Uh, please. What's your NCLEX name? The, oh, the NCLEX name. I'm sorry. What's the Instagram? Instagram is at the boot nurse. It is at the boot nurse. All right. Hey, but if you guys are just joining, we did NCLEX questions, you know, like Camille, who just joined. Um, we did NCLEX questions at the beginning. All right. 530 Central Standard Time, Monday, Wednesday and Friday. OK. And then now we're doing an ask me anything. So if you guys are new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. Right. And if you're not a nurse, what you doing here rocking? You know what I'm saying? What you rocking with me for? You know, hey, kind of got some fuzzies. Hey, by the way, these aren't fuzzies. These are gray hairs. All right. Don't talk about me. All right. Uh, a little bit about me. Been a nurse for three and a half years. I've worked in ICU. I've worked OR and I've worked PACU. Uh, I've been in the Navy for 16 years. I've been on two deployments. Uh, I was a surgical tech in the Navy as well as a hospital corpsman. On top of, I am a master instructor in the Navy. Been an instructor for eight years. I've taught surgical technology, pre-hospital trauma, burns, uh, tactical combat, casualty care. I'm a trauma nurse instructor. Uh, I taught ACLS. So I have a good plethora of education. Uh, and this is why I like to do this. I like to teach y'all because I wish or facilitate. I wish that I had something like this or I even knew of somebody doing this when I was in school because it probably would have helped me a ton. So it says, Jelaine, I'm sorry. I missed what you said about you and your study group. <sighs> Jelaine, really? Oh, my God. You're going to make me repeat it. Uh, I'm an OTA, uh, just want to learn extra miss. Hey, look, miss Ashley, Ashley. Um, I appreciate you being here. It's, it's there's nothing wrong with learning extra. 
There's nothing wrong. With, there's nothing wrong with getting your learn on. Trust and believe me. So I appreciate you being here. Ash says, I'm now three months away from graduating after failing three classes. Med surge being one of them. I'm grateful, ma'am. Delayed, never denied, ever, 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 ever. Let me tell you something. I love it when people come in here and tell me that they fail. But the most important thing about that is not you only fail if you quit. You know what I mean? You only fail if you quit. I said, what's up, dude? Kevin is a great teacher and entrepreneur. Hey, shout out to my man, James. Hey, if you guys don't follow that dude right there, James Ward, business mentor, anybody that wants to learn about side hustles with digital products and all stuff like that, check that dude out right there. My man had a really good live yesterday. Make sure you guys go check that out. All right. Good dude. Wholesome dude. Lives in Alabama. You know, he likes Arkansas Razorbacks, but, you know, go horns because we are going to that game. Um, But shout out to you, James. I appreciate you being here, brother. Hey, by the way, 1.2 views that I had up in here today and I got you already see the likes you already see what's up brother so um it says Jelaine says yes I need it uh yes I need it trying to see how a study group can be effective to an anti-social ma'am Jelaine how you anti-social and you come up in here and talk to me what what does that even mean all right Jelaine I got you I got you hold on one second I'm, I'm I'll repeat it just for you uh please spell out your Instagram name hold on I got something for you I'm just gonna do this I'm just going to bring this back up so y'all can see it. All right. Give me one sec. It says, thank you, Kevin. I'm happy. I found Power bank. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad everybody is here. All right. So my Instagram is the boot nurse. So that portion that's highlighted right there, that is it. So I'm going to leave that up so you guys can see it. Okay. Uh, but Miss Jill, it says uh, fail equals first attempt. Oh my God. That's what I'm talking about. Melissa. First attempt and leaning or you mean learning? I'm oh, I'm tracking. I like that. I like that. All right, here we go. So Miss Jelaine, check this out. So what I said is when you're in school is that if you want to learn, if you want to understand what it's like to do the team concept now, and if you want to understand how to easily get through your classes is that you want to be in a group of four, you and three other people. Let's just say you're going to be in med surge and your first, your first test is over 16 chapters, which is very, very likely, right? So get yourself a group. Right. You do four chapters. The other people do four chapters. That's 16 chapters. You split the work up 25 percent, but you reap 100 percent of the benefits. You see what I'm saying? What that does, that allows for the team concept to already be there. Number one. OK, it allows for the team concept to be there. And if you have a weak link in the team, kick that ass out and bring somebody else that's going to put in the work. Right. What this will do, it brings the team concept now. That way, when you get to a research um, you get to a research uh, uh, project that that team concept is already built. And then what it does, it fosters the team concept for when you actually get out here and start working as a nurse, whether it be an RN or an LPN, because RNs are going to delegate and LPNs are essentially, you know, going to receive those delegations from the RN. All right. Does everybody got that? Does everybody got that for my uh, for my uh, uh Oh, my God. For my Instagram, by the way, everything is the boot nurse. So if you type in the boot nurse on Google, my YouTube will pop up. My Instagram will pop up. My Facebook will pop up. You know, my Tic Tac will pop up. All that good stuff. Gotcha. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. You are welcome. Hey, but here's the thing. You got to get out of that antisocial. You got to get out of it. You got to get out of it. I'm not trying to tell you to go out here and be a social butterfly and be like, oh, my God, what's up, guys? Hey, ain't nobody trying to, no one's trying to tell you to do that. You know what I'm saying? But definitely you want to get out of that bubble. You want to, you definitely want to be a little social, but I, I understand it's like, you know, we're very, we're very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We're very, uh, particular about who we hang out with. We're very particular about who we hang out with because you know, that's just, that's just us as people. Right. So just, that's just my little advice that worked for me. So I really want it to work for y'all as well. Okay. So and by the way, I wasn't picking my nose. I was doing this number, right? So if you got a problem with that, the allergies is bad here in San Antonio, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Hey, but if you guys have found value, smash that like button. What other questions do you guys have? What other questions do you guys have? Um, I guess another little tidbit about me. My second deployment was in uh, Afghanistan. I actually had somebody in my chat who was from Afghanistan. I did that for a year. I, would, I did that as a surgical tech and we did a uh, Medivax and Kazavax. So we got to fly out in helicopters and stuff like uh, stuff like that. Life limb eyesight, emergency surgery. So um, it was it was pretty wild. It was pretty wild. Um, probably some of the best experiences I've ever had in my life, which, you know, got me to nursing and then, you know, it ultimately got me into education, which is why I love being here sharing all this information with y'all. Um, 
So what other questions do you guys have? I'm going to hang out for a little bit unless y'all don't want me to hang out and I'll leave. <laughs> then leave because I will. All right. Also, I'm working on merch, y'all. I'm working on merch of all my little great sayings that people like um, that merch is coming. By the way, it would behoove all 172 of y'all to be here on Friday. It would behoove you all to be here Friday. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So uh, what other questions you guys got? What do you got? It says going, going and Jen says I'm going into mother baby and on what's the best way to study for that? You mean you're going into mother baby like the class in school? Is that what you mean, Jen? Uh, what's the hardest class in nursing school? That Janelle, that depends on you. My hardest class in nursing school was definitely fundamentals. And I'll tell you why, because I already had all this medical experience. And so I thought I was going into nursing school thinking I knew everything. And then I got humbled real quick. I almost failed my first semester of nursing school because of my real world life experience. Um, so that was fundamentals was hard for me because I, I, I didn't I didn't get out of my own way and I had to unlearn what I had learned out in the field and relearn the new way of becoming a nurse. So that was for me. Uh, for most this farm, it could be patho. It could be uh, it could be research. It could be psych. It could be maternity, mother, baby, could be med surge. Med surge is a killer, too. Like med surge is what I call the second killer. If you can get past if you could get past fundamentals or foundations and then get past med surge, uh, you, I think, you, you know, you, you'll have a much smoother time, in my opinion, my opinion. But of course, that is my opinion. Uh, please don't take that as gospel because then people are going to be like, oh, my God, Kevin told me that that's the one. I'm like, no, that's not it. So uh, who said something? Um, you're going into mother baby. Um, so for mother baby, the big ones that I can think of off the top of my head is like, you know, abrupto, abrupto placente, you know, preeclampsia, understanding that you deal with two patients, uh, fetal heart tones, you know, stuff like veal chop, right? Uh, understanding the difference between stages and phases when it comes to labor, because they are different. They are different. All right. Uh, did you use Mark Clement lectures? If so, what was your experience with it? I love, I did use them. So I used the Mark Clement lectures, the audios, and I actually went to his review in 2019 and it was done in Houston and the review was exactly like the audios. Um, so, uh, I liked it. I still like it to this day. That dude's like in his 80s. And if I could ever shake his hand, I would, because he actually was my was like was like one of my like. I guess silent mentors mentally that I was just like, yeah, I got to get out here and I got to teach like this dude. All right. Med search for me. Uh, it's just so much, it is a lot of information. I just failed fundamentals yesterday. Not going to repeat. Not got not got to repeat next. Oh, so you have to take it next year. He didn't. He did. Like I literally was looking up and it didn't say that he passed away. I actually talked to somebody who actually knows him and he didn't pass away. I don't know what y'all are reading. Y'all, you're like the fourth person. I looked it up and it said he didn't pass away. They said he retired in 2021. That's what it said. Now, hey, don't make me a hey, well, I'm not making this live sad. You understand me? I'm going to do this afterwards. All right, Jelaine, don't be coming here doing that. All right. Uh, it says D Burger. It says, I just started med search. Can you give me any tips? D Burger, bro, bro, sir or ma'am or whoever you are. I literally just got finished talking about that. I heard he passed away and his daughter has control of his content. Probably. Probably. He actually had many daughters. I think he had like two or three. So his stuff is hard to find. His stuff is hard to find. That's because he has clinic reviews and he has three. He has like three or four, like anywhere from like four to six people that teach in different portions of the United States. So I, like I said, I went to the one in Houston and uh, it was Pete. It was Pete that taught that one. Great guy, former Air Force guy. So he and I got along really well when I asked questions. So it was great. Uh, his stuff is hard to find. His stuff is very, the old stuff is very easy to find. The new stuff is in pop. Like they got some, they got that, sh they got it locked up tight. You know what I'm saying? So some of it is uh, uh, stew docs in PDF form. Yep. You can find a lot. You can find a lot of his stuff on, um, uh, on Quizlet or on Cram or anything like that. I actually here, oh, here it is right here. Yeah. So I actually have his book. See, like I actually have the actual yellow book. And like, this is like one of those things that I can, I can, I can't even give this up. 
I can't give this up even if I wanted to. Like, it still has, like, all of my notes, you know, talking about dumping syndrome and, you know, freaking height or her. I can't give it up. Want to sell it? Absolutely not. I don't. I don't. Especially after you told me this man just passed away. No. Uh, is it good to use Quizlet? Janelle, uh, what? It, how, how, how best can I say this? You use Quizlet at your own risk. Quizlet is good, in my opinion, in nursing school, but not for the NCLEX. Uh, deep out the archives. Look, I got the the blue book is somewhere in my closet. Um, but then sometimes when I'm sitting here and I'm coaching my students, like when I'm doing one on one coaching for NCLEX, he's alive and well. Want to sell it now? No, I don't. Stop it! Don't you see? Don't stop playing with me. But um, <laughs> uh, sometimes my students they're they're not picking up on things, so I'm just like, you know what? Let me break out Mark Clement and let me show you how easy it is, right? And I start and I start, you know, going through some of the things. A lot of the things I already still know up in my head, right? Now there's some of them I'm just like, you know what? Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. And I'll break. I'll break. I'll do this. One of these numbers right here. Like, let's see. Ah, there we go. <laughs> you know, so um, and they love it, and they love it. They're just like, I've never heard of Mark Clinic. I was just like, like he's the, he's the OG. He is definitely the OG. I think I think I might just, you know, get, you know, get his name tattooed on my forearm, you know, like OG, OG MK, you know what I'm saying? It says, love your eyebrows. What do you mean? What's wrong with these things? What's wrong with these things? Are they bushy? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't even know. I've never had nobody tell me that they love my eyebrows. So I don't even know how to respond to that. But anyways, hey, if you guys are finding value, make sure you guys smash that like button. Check out everything I got going on over uh, at the links. Hey, I got a freebie, y'all. I got a freebie. You know what I'm saying? 42 pages. 42 pages of test taking tips to help you conquer the NCLEX. All right. Check that out. That link is in my bio. It says, I'm definitely hiring you when it comes time to take the NCLEX. Look, as somebody who is frequent with the NCLEX, I appreciate that. Um, like I said, I I don't think you were here when I said it, but I failed my NCLEX three times and then I passed it on the fourth. No one in here would ever know that unless I openly told you. And you want to know who doesn't care that you fail the NCLEX? The job and no one besides you. All right. So get out of your own way. For those that are taking the NCLEX, get out of your own way. Trust your process of studying. Don't, and especially if you're about to take your NCLEX within the next couple of days or next week or so, don't change up your studying because you're going to start to make yourself nervous and then that's when you mess up. That's when you become complacent and you make mistakes. This, this is not the time for you to be complacent. All right. Not the time at all. All right. So stay your course. Keep pushing. You guys ever heard the term get off the beach or get off this beach? If you haven't, I'm going to explain it to you. So during Normandy, the invasion of Normandy during World War Two, what we call D-Day, um, you know, the Germans had, you know, the Americans pinned down on, you know, like Omaha Beach and all across, you know, the beaches of France. If you stayed on the beach, you died. If you stayed on the beach, you died. If you stay stationary, that is what was going to happen to you. So the only way for you to be successful and chances of staying alive is to run through it. It's probably some of the scariest thing that you could ever do. But guess what? You're going to be scared, but you're going to do it scared. So people are so scared to go and take the exam. But that's OK. Get off the beach and run through the hurlings and all the all of the thing, your thought pro run through it all. And get through that exam. That's all that is. That's all that is. Bless says four more months and then it's real test time. I'm so nervous. Uh, if I was more persistent, I think I would have already passed. Need to buckle down uh, half till March. Grace. You have till March before you know it, it's going to be March. So you know, what you need to do is that you need to push anybody that's inside of the seven day NCLEX course right now. There there's some, you will hear me say at the end of it that you're always thriving and you're always pushing. And then I'll tell you to get to work because that's all that's all you need to do now is that you got to get to work. You got to put the work in. The shit's not meant to be easy. If it's meant to be easy, so and so you went to high school with that chewed on fucking crayons will be a nurse next to you. Or the nurse taking care of your, your, your spouse or your loved ones. And then you're just going to be like, I can't believe they just let fucking anybody over here. And don't get me wrong. We got some tools as nurses. Trust and believe me. We got some tools that are out here as nurses. But 
putting those barriers up really does limit the amount of tools that you get. There are more, there are way more great nurses out here than those small little bad apples, okay? Uh, what is it? Also know that you've been studying for the NCLEX since day one of nursing school. Facts, you sure have. You don't, and you, you sure have, and you don't even know it, right? It's because you have no idea, like, when they talk about NCLEX the first semester, you're just like, you kind of brush it off. But the closer you get to graduation, that's where it really starts to sink in. And you'll be like, NCLEX, what the hell is that? And you'll be like, oh my God, that's a licensing exam. Exactly. Exactly. You know the hardest part about nurse about you know your first portion of your nursing journey? It is nursing school. The hardest part of your journey at that point is nursing school. Because you had to do the prereqs, the te- the entrance exam to get in. Then you go through the endurance. And the hardships of all the not trust me, y'all are going to get to a point where you're just going to be like, fuck it, I quit. You're going to sit in front of your computer. I can't even tell you how many times I sat in front of this computer and I said, I don't want to do this no more. I don't want to do it. But then. When the moment you say that you don't want to do it, that's when you do it. That's when you do it. That's that is how people go from being unsuccessful to being successful. I could have quit after my third time of failing my exam. One young lady I'm coaching right now failed her NCLEX 10 times. She And I was just like, you must really want to be an RN. And she was just like, I do. And I was just like, and that's the type of shit that I like to hear. Because you will be one. Come hell or high water. You know what I mean? So, so, the hardest part about this journey is nursing school. Because you have to build, it's all the endurance. This is why I say taking your NCLEX, it's not, you don't pass it, you conquer it. Because it is a journey from the moment you open your mouth and you say that I want to be a nurse. To the point to where you graduate and then you have that exam, you pass it, and now you have a license. If you don't pass it, you conquer it. Think about Game of Thrones. You know, a shout out, a, a RIP, you know, to, 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 to some of the folks that happened in the Red Wedding, you know what I'm saying? But in order for them to conquer, they had to go from point A to point B to take land, to take what was theirs or what they deemed was theirs. That's exactly what, if you think about it, if you think about NCLEX and use the analogy of Game of Thrones or any type of medieval anything, it's the same exact concept. You have to go through the you have to go through the journey and the endurance and conquer in order for you to be successful. And NCLEX is just the first part of of conquering that portion of your campaign, right? So always remember that it's an endurance. It's endurance. It's not a sprint. Trust and believe me. It is a marathon. It is not a sprint. Uh, let me see what y'all got going on here. Sorry, I know I was running my mouth. If you guys are finding value, smash that like button. Uh, at what point should we switch from school mode to NCLEX? Uh, about to start my last semester. You should start, uh, is it Gerard? You should start thinking like that now. Uh, do you help with HESI? I do help with HESI. Uh, I just failed my uh, my PN HESI for the second time. Is it Mama of Many Hats? I do I do help with HESI. If you're talking about your exit HESI, yeah, I help with that. You can check that out. That link is in my bio and it'll say private tutoring or private one-on-one call. One of those, that's what it says. Uh, I'm starting to study hard now. I got four more months. Blessed. First of all, push. You're always going to hear me. To, you're always going to you're always going to hear me to tell you to push, to get off your beach, get out of your own head. And if you're scared to push through it. So studying, definitely study hard, but study effectively. OK, study effectively. Do you feel like ATI helped for NCLEX? I didn't use ATI. I used HESI. And no, I don't feel like it helped that. I didn't feel like it helped me at all. Um, I do so many ATIs and everyone says ATI helps. So ATI help ATI. So ATI may help them, but it may not help you. You know, this is why this is why there's so many other programs that are out there that are, are that are helpful for people. But has ATI been proven to help people? Yes. Just like HESI has been proven to help people, uh, but it just did not help me and it may not help you. Uh, mine was accelerated. This year was a blur. Uh, my next step is NCLEX. Look, I was in an accelerated BSN program, so I understand before you blink and you're just like, hey, how the hell did I get here? English is my second. Uh, do you think I can make it? I do think that you can make it. The thing that the barrier for you, the sunshines, is with English being your second language, it's you converting the it's you essentially trying to read it and then trying to convert it to your language and then trying to understand it back in English. So you have to be able to understand what the word means in English because that's how it is applied, if that makes sense. Uh, How much do ATI help with NCLEX? Oh, I already already answered that question. I already answered that question. Uh, can you help me? Uh, can you help, please? Can you please help us, please? Cynthia, like I, I literally just did like a whole like, you know, NCLEX questions. I do them 530 Central Standard Time, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But if you need more help, 
like where it's one on one like this. You can check out those links in my bio. Uh, Olivia says, hi, I'm starting nursing school January uh, 18th for RN and I'm pretty nervous. Hey, that's cool for you to be nervous. It's normal. Get your time management in check right now. Uh, did you ever work as a CNA prior to working as a nurse? So, Ra, I did. Um, I was uh, or I am a hospital corpsman in the Navy. So it's equivalent to an LVN in, in the Navy side. So I essentially worked as an LVN, then did that for about three years. And then I worked as a surgical tech and I did that pretty much until now uh, through the Navy. Um, and so I had that much. I had that type of medical experience before I went to nursing school. And I went to, I started nursing school in 2017. So I was already uh, in medicine for about 10 years before I started nursing school. Uh, do you think taking the NCLEX a month after graduation is too soon? I don't, Camille. You actually want to take it as fast. You want to take it as fast as possible. So that way you don't lose all that information that you acquired while you were in school. Do it fresh. I'm purchasing your course, but I don't have the money for tutoring. Any study layout advice? So mm, let's think. Let's think. So I've already talked about this, Grace, before. Um, I would, you definitely, if you have, if you've already taken the NCLEX before, you definitely want to look at your, your performance breakdown and see where you have the lowest score. And that's where you start, you know, kind of work your way up. The second thing is time management. You got to put yourself on account. You got to put yourself on a, on, a, on a, I put myself on an Excel spreadsheet. Do it. Do it. Hold and then hold yourself accountable to it. Uh, and then audit your time, see where you can fit, see where you can start to trim the fat to where you can give yourself more time to study and, you know, in larger sections. Uh, also, put yourself on a study calendar, get, you know, create a tracker for yourself. That's what I do with the coaching. You know, we create the tracker. We do it. I create the tracker. And then we, we and then, you know, we audit it and we go through and we do that once a week. So um, there's that. Um, also calendar, you know, know, know what you're going to do every day, every other day or whatever your schedule is going to be. And that's how, you, that's how you hold yourself accountable. What part of nursing is the hardest part is the hardest for non-English speaking. So that just depends, Sunshine. It depends. It, that is that is that is based. That is a, a, a case by case basis. It could be the hands on. It could be honestly the, the content and the big medical words or the pharmacology words for medications and stuff that could really hurt people. So it, it really is on a case by case basis. Uh, CST student here and your content helped me so much with midterms. Melissa, Miss Ma'am. Hey, shout out to hey, anybody that's a search tech out here. So it's funny because I created an NCLEX course. I actually had, I actually taught in um, a national certification exam for surgical techs for MBS TSA. And I did that my entire three and a half years. So Hey, don't be surprised if I create a, a, a CST, you know, prep course. <laughs> I said, I lo uh, love this advice. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Do you sell some nursing books? Cynthia, so if you go to the link in my bio, I actually have a victory guide. And I call it the NCLEX victory guide because I say the path to the NCLEX starts with you. Hey, the only way to, the only way to achieve victory is for you to look within yourself and realize that you are your problem, but you are also your solution. Um, and I do have that linked in my bio. You may have to click on this thing a few times or whatever, uh, but it'll take you to a link tree and then you'll see it. It'll say the victory guide and you can go over there and check that out. Uh, I can speak. Yeah, you can speak. What you mean? Is med surge hard? It depends. Uh, what specialty are you currently working? So I've worked in ICU. I've worked OR and I've worked PACU. Right now I'm at home. Uh, it says speaking Spanish is, inter is interpretation of wording. Yep. Yeah. Uh, need to reread over and over. Yeah. And that's exactly what I said the first time. Uh, I'm studying from the MBS TSE exam and graduate and take the exam in March. Shout out to you, Miss Melissa. Hey, you're going to go rock that exam. Hey, when I when I became a, a, a CST, uh, when I finally got my uh, my certification, I had tons of cardiology on there. Like it's like they hated me so much. Uh, so just be ready for that. They can they can throw they can throw anything out there at you. Also, hey, Melissa, here's another nugget for you. Think about did you know that you can go from being a CST to being an F, uh, uh, an FA, a first assist, to then being a licensed surgical assistant? Did you know that you could do that? And you can actually do the same thing as a circulating OR nurse, or I'm sorry, as a first assisting o OR nurse. So, hey, if CST and being in the OR and stuff like that is something that you like and you enjoy it and you want to make that a, a lifelong you know profession slash career, you very well um, you very well could do great things by moving up like that. So shout out to all 93 of y'all. Hey, y'all held me hostage. I said I was going to get off and y'all held me hostage and I don't like that. So for that, I want 60,000 likes. Somebody get carpal tunnel for me right now. I want a little, uh, hey, uh, who is that? 
Uh, Olivia, hey, I want carpal tunnel. Hey, get carpal tunnel for me right now. Do it. Do it right now. No, I didn't. I thought about RNFA or PA. Here's my thing. If you, Melissa, here's what I'll tell you. you if you want to do the PA route or if you want to do like the practitioner route, go to FMP school. Or I'm sorry. If you're going to go to do the nursing route, you can go RNFA and then you can go to nurse practitioner school and then specialize and do surgery. And then you'll be, you can do, uh, be a surgical nurse practitioner. You can do that too. You can do that too. There's so many ways. There's so many ways that you can do that. Uh, what does it take to become a midwife? So in order for you to be a midwife, you have to go work in labor and delivery, uh, mostly so you can actually understand the environment of what you're about to be a part of. That's number one. Number two, uh, it's a mastery level degree. So you have to go back to school and get your master's degree as a midwife. Okay. Camille says, I got to go. Bye, Camille. Bye bye. Hey, I appreciate you stopping by. I appreciate you stopping by. Um, what else? What other questions do you guys got? You know, somebody else was supposed to come here. Is there anybody that's on here that's still on here that passed their NCLEX that I talked that we talked about earlier? I know Des was on here had other people on here, too. So a uh, student nurse from Spain, uh, go to Puerto Rico, take the NCLEX in Spanish. So I don't know if you know this, but if you go to Puerto Rico and take the NCLEX in Spanish, did you know that you still have to take the NCLEX here in the United States? Did you know that? Because you take the NCLEX over there to work in Puerto Rico, not to work in the United States. So just, just let y'all know. Solution for Spanish speaking. Okay. Uh, what's your thoughts on CRNAs? Any advice, suggestions? So I actually was going to go CRNA, um, but I realized like after working in the ICU, getting burnt out and having to add a lot of reevaluation, I realized that CRNA was not the goal that I wanted to go to anymore. So I, CRNAs are the highest paid nurses. They are. They are easily over $200,000 easy a year, but you're going to work and the school is hard. It's very hard. And you can't, here's another thing. You cannot work while you're in school. Like you actually have to sign a contract saying like you cannot work while you're in school. So best believe you're going to be taking out a student loan or you're going to be paying cash or you're going to be saving up for it. So just be aware of that. But CRNA, you do it. You definitely can do it. Any tips uh, about taking the T's? Is it Yasmin or Aizmin? Um, I don't know what's exactly what T's. Are you talking about the entry exam? Uh, what's the best pathway for labor and delivery nursing going? Um, so most L&D nursing, like if you want to try to go be an L&D nurse, they want you to have at least a year of experience in med surge or some. They want you to have a year of nursing experience somewhere before you go there. But they could have a residency program. So that just requires you to just look. Is it Sabrina? That's different. I've never seen somebody spell the name Sabrina with a Y. So I'm going to start calling you Sabrina with a Y. Um, uncooked nugget. OK, well, that's not good. I'm an RN now but I'm stuck on what unit to choose. Well, that's going to take, that's going to take you trying to figure that out. I never heard NCLEX in Spanish. So in Puerto Rico, you can take it. You can take it. They have it in Spanish because the Puerto, you know, the primary language of Puerto Rico is Spanish. However, that NCLEX will not, you, ha, you would have to take the NCLEX again in the United States or in Canada in order for you to work in the United States or Canada. Trust me. I've, I've coached, Two or three, three people from Puerto Rico that are studying for their NCLEX to take here in the United States. I'm telling you, um, uh, I know this is for NCLEX, but what do you recommend uh, to help study for the MBSTSA currently used Lang? You talking about the yellow book, Melissa, the, the, the Lang yellow book? Because if that's the one that you're using, that's the one that I recommend. Uh, so do you have to be a nurse first? But yes, you do, Cynthia. Um, interest exam, yes, uh, I mean, um, there's a book called the Mometrics. It's a Mometrics yellow book. You can get off Amazon. It's like 30 bucks. That's a good one. Thoughts on nurse anesthetist. Um, if you want to do it, do it. You be, But uncooked nugget, you know that you have to have critical care experience at least a year before you can apply. Just finished nursing school and got a PACU position. Any advice? Oh, Frankie, you Gucci. PACU is, the, is like is a hidden gem. It's like the Holy Grail. Um, the biggest thing about PACU is number one, be a sponge since you just got a job there. And number two is airway, 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 airway. That is the most important thing that you need. Once they come out of the, once they come out of surgery or any procedure, airway is your number one priority. And you better understand it. Understand, understand they can come out intubated. They can come out on drips like propofol or even pressors or anything like, like you gotta, you, and you gotta know medication, pharmacology. You got to know. You got to know what the pharmacokinetics are going to do to a patient, especially when they're innovated. OK, and they, so airway is 
Airway, Frankie, Airway. Do you think I should go directly RN instead of LPN? Uh, is it is it BLIN or BILIN or however you pronounce your name? Um, you go to where your pockets allow for you to go. If you want to go directly to RN, make it happen. If you want to go LPN, make it happen. Regardless, both positions are very important. All right. Yes, Yellow Book. What you talking? Oh, yeah. Uh, Melissa, you're Gucci. That's the one that I use. That's a good one. Uh, why do you always, uh, why do they always push med surge? Uh, is it because of the variety of patient care? Yes. Yes and no. But then that old school way of thinking is all nurses need to go to med surge to get there, to get there, you know, it's considered slow, a little bit slower. You get a little bit more time, time management, so on and so forth. But I can tell you right now that is not true. Um, it That's why they tell you to go there is because the old school way of thinking is to get you there. Um, so, you know, you can understand whatever, but you don't have to do that. I didn't go to med surge. I went straight to ICU because I said, come hell or high water. That's where I'm going. And I didn't accept a job at in, in any med surge. But this isn't me shitting on med surge because med surge is a specialty, y'all. I need for y'all to realize that you can get a certification as a med surge nurse. OK, just like you can get a certification as being any other type of nurse. But it all depends on where you want to go. You know? There are certain there are certain levels or certain ports, uh, certain parts of nursing where they require you to have at least a year of experience like labor and delivery, you know, but that 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 is all location dependent as well. Uh, yes, uh, I have been reading that and looking at the videos. But other than that, any other tips? Um, I re- wait. What program? Uh, uh, Yasmin, are you are you going into an LPN program or an RN program? I probably should ask that. Uh, do you think when I become an LVN, I will be able to do midwife? No, you have to. You have you can't do midwifery as an LVN. You midwifery is a mastery level. That's advanced. It's an APRN, so advanced practice registered nurse. Also, you're in a BSNRN program. Okay, so um, let me see, let me see, let me see. So, any other tips? Of course, you got YouTube channels. They have a really good one. What's up, Kate? Hey, if you guys do paramedic anything, go talk, go to go, go check out Medicaid. She has some really good stuff over there. And I swear my for you page is full of shit that you talk about, Kate. And I was about to unfollow you, but I was just like, nah, Kate's coochie out here, so we're good. Um, so um, but yes, me to answer your question. Um, you got other you got videos like Osmosis, which is a really good, uh, a really good one. Uh, what's another one? Of course, Khan Academy is a really good one. What else is out there? What else is out there? Um, Amoeba Sisters is out there. I usually have a whole list that I would go through, but I don't have it in front of me. So, but I would say start with those. I would say start with those. Those are some really good YouTube, uh, YouTube channels that can help you with teas. Um, or you could just type in tea study guide 2023 that pops up in freaking YouTube and just, you know, kind of take it from there. So what else y'all got? What other questions do you guys have? Uh, what about nursing informatics? What about it? Nursing informatics is a mastery level of education. Um, nursing informatics, essentially, like you, you, you improve, you improve upon, you essentially help uh, improve like uh, electronic healthcare records, um, as well as other things to improve patient care. It improves patient care. So uh, anybody understand? Anybody ever seen those um, those iPads that they have in hospitals and they're like the interpreters? Um, Yasmin, you're welcome. Um, that's actually nursing informatics on how to provide better patient care, how to provide better patient care. Sorry, y'all. My son is being destructive. Uh, what do you think about Navy humanitarian ships? You talk about like the U.S. the USNS Mercy and the USNS Comfort. Um, I think that they're cool. I think they're cool, but you can actually go work on those ships as civilians. You can actually go do that. But that's, you know, that's like a through like uh, uh, the US dot, usjobs.gov. And if you see it there, apply for it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Uh, as far as med resources, Hippocrates and Pettistat is great. Hey, Hippocrates is a great pharmacology research. I actually a uh, resource. I actually have it in my phone. And there once when I was trying to understand when I was trying to learn pressors, that was great because it'll tell you right then and there what pressors are compatible with with each other that way you can give them through the same line any type of medication as well as you know you learn the pharmacokinetics pharmadynamics and all that other good stuff uh who is it is it alas alas babs thank you you're very welcome uh how did you choose your specialty when you graduated i'm having trouble so timmy i'm sorry i could not help myself <laughs> so here's what i'll do or this is what i did i already knew right off rip that i wanted to go icu i already knew right off rip um, but then I did have in the back of my mind, um, I was like, if I needed to go to med surge, I would go to med surge. Um, and then the last but not least, it would have been the ER. 
right? But then for you, if you don't know where you want to go, MedSurge is a good spot to go. MedSurge is a good spot to go. Uh, when I get my LPN, should I go into the Army, then get my RN, or get my RN and then go in as an officer? I would recommend the latter. Go get your RN and then go in as an officer. Thank you so much. You're welcome. But hey, I'm, hey, I'm literally going to get off here in seven minutes. So what other questions do you guys have? Hey, so I'm gonna, hey, we're going to rope it back in. If you guys are new here, welcome. We all got me to 60,000 likes. We had a one point, we had a 1200 people that came into the live. We do NCLEX questions every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 530. Um, go check, make sure you guys go check out, you know, all the stuff that I got going on. Like, Hey, I got a free download over there. So you guys can go over there and check that out as well as I got an ebook. I created an NCLEX course that you get for a lifetime. You only pay for it one time. Also, I do private tutoring one-on-one, and I have a coaching package if you guys need help with NCLEX. I understand what it's like. I failed my NCLEX three times, and one of the biggest things that I acquired was a mentor, somebody who took all of the fuzz and all of the fog from in between to get me to point A to point B. And then once they honed me in and let me know that I was doing something wrong, it just, it just made sense. And then systematically and regimentally, I started putting in the work. And then, of course, here I am to this day, three and a half years later, no one would have ever known that I failed my NCLEX, y'all. No one would have ever known unless I openly told. I tell people at work and they're like, are you serious? They're just like, I would have never guessed that. Like, you're a great nurse. Exactly the point. Exactly the point. No one cares. So get out of your own way. If you're scared, go to church. But if you're scared, do it scared. Get off the beach. Get out of the get out of the line of fire. Get out of your own head and push forward to get to safety. All right. That, that's how it is. Figure one is great. Figure one is great. However, figure one is kind of it's kind of you have to have a license of some sort in order for you a license or a certification of some sort in order for you to use it. I actually recommended it to my, one of my buddies uh, who's in PA who was in PA school. Uh, okay, uh, you did good. Thanks a lot. All right, appreciate it. Uh, I'll be graduating next spring, and I feel the pressure and almost imposter syndrome. Oh, is it uh, Fiona? There is no almost. You will most hundred percent have imposter syndrome, and that is very, very normal. It is very normal for you to have it. You're gonna have it probably for your first six months to a year. You're gonna have imposter syndrome. All right. So, and that's normal. You're gonna feel like, why did I become a nurse? How did I end up here? I don't know anything. It comes with time. I don't expect for you. I don't expect for you to know it right off top. I don't expect for you to Kate. Look, hey, hey Kate, you and I are vibing on the same way on the same wave as always. So that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to tell you. Like you're going to it's going to it's OK. But the one thing that I do want for you to do when you do get to that point is I want you to be vocal about it. I want you to tell whoever your preceptor is or I want you to tell your nurse manager or your charge nurse, like, look, I'm not feeling this like some like I, I, I have imposter syndrome. I don't know if it's work. And a real leader will have a sit down and talk with you and be like, hey, it's OK. It's normal. Let us try to figure this out together. If other people are just like, hey, suck it the fuck up, then you're probably not in a really good spot because you're dealing with people's lives. And that's real. So uh, see you Friday. Can't wait to see what you got in store for us. All right, Miss. All right, Grace. I can't. Hey, look. OK. All right. So I'm excited about this. I've been working on this for probably like the past like month. And so, uh, you know, I got some stuff that's, you know, I'm going to talk about some stuff. I'm going to talk about some stuff for y'all. OK, so uh, appreciate you and see you when you get back here next time. But hey, got about another four minutes. What other questions do you guys have? What other questions do you guys have? Usually me and Kate go back and forth when she gets up in here, but uh, Kate missed all the fun. So, uh, ma'am, Miss User 57, you are very welcome. You are very, very welcome. All right. Hey, but shout out to all 91 of y'all in here. Hey, if you guys have been here the whole time, been rocking with me and, been, and you know, you guys have been finding value, smash that like button. You know your boy. You know your boy. Come out here three times a week, bring in the heat. You know what I'm saying? And if you can't take the heat, you got to get out the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, what else? What other questions do you guys have before we break out? Fiona, is it Fiona Gale? Yeah, Fiona, you are very welcome. You are a good teacher slash motivator. Miss T or Mr. T, Mr. T. Um, I appreciate that. I've been a teacher, motivator, educator for like the last eight years. Um, when I, uh, you know, I was active duty in the service as well as in my reserve time as well as now. Uh, and this is like, this is, this is not, this is not just an a passion. This is an obsession at this point. Like, I love coming out here. I love it. So um, I love coming out here and motivating y'all because I wish somebody did this for me. I wish I had somebody 
or I wish I had something like this or knew of something like this when I was in school, as well as when I was studying for NCLEX, or maybe I wouldn't have failed so many times or been unsuccessful so many times. So I'm glad that you guys find value in this and I do it all. I'll do it all the time. I will do it until Kate tells me she doesn't want me to do it anymore. And then I'll just leave. <laughs> I'm just playing, Kate. I don't need people coming after you. Be like, why are you run them off? Um, watching Travelers on Netflix. OK, thanks. I appreciate it. And you're hey, you're welcome. You're very welcome. Uh, thank you for your service. Hey, I appreciate your support. I appreciate your support. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm just here to learn. But I appreciate you. Is it Jill Wag? I, pre hey, I appreciate you sitting here and learning and taking it all in. Haley Hales. I appreciate you. You're very, very welcome. All right. Well, uh, I think that's it for the questions for tonight. I appreciate everybody stopping by. Um, last little plug for myself. Um, if you need any type of help with NCLEX or any type of help with your la the latter portions of nursing school or anything, check out those links in my bio. All right. Like I said, I got those. I got that free. I got that freebie in there for you. You know what I'm saying? I got that ebook in there for you. Hey, by the way, I'm working on an audio book for that ebook. I'm just saying 780 pages, y'all. 780. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, who doesn't want to listen to my my buttery voice when they're driving to and from work? You know what I'm saying? So uh, there's that. Make sure you guys check out all the social medias that I'm on. Check out my YouTube, which is at The Boot Nurse. Check out my Instagram, which is also at The Boot Nurse. All right. So uh, that's the last little plug for myself. I appreciate everybody jumping in. You guys already know the deal. Uh, I will be back on Friday. Same time, same channel. Uh, and hey, make sure y'all ready. Make sure y'all ready because I got something good for y'all. Something that essentially y'all been asking about. And we're going to talk about it on Friday. So until then, I will catch everybody on Friday. You guys have a good uh, next couple of days and you guys be safe. Bye.